and then I'll do like a clap just so I can have it synchronized. Get it down but I can go ahead and five, four, three, two, one. Tristan's Shop Talk, episode 18. Hello, Joe Navarro. 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 Oh. God damn, is I'm, my voice that deep? I messed Shit. that up, I'm just I smoking believe. way too much. Oh my God. Really? You think your voice is a little deep? Or, no, I, I think, think it's I, way no. deeper than last time. Really? You yeah. think so? Listen to me. No? no oh, maybe there's a, man. Maybe we'll throw a comparison. So we're definitely recording. I see the waves. And then obviously you're seeing behind me and we're definitely recording on video, correct? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I says I have the angle here and then you have that angle there. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, you're like video production. I'm like the audio. And then we're kind of like... Mixing it up. Mixing it up. There you go. Yeah, we got that. So, hello, and uh, welcome to TST Podcast, and thank you for uh, showing up. And thank you, Definitely. Man. I know this has always been in the making, but like a... a it, we we were, did it already, man. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had did one last time, and then now we're, we're graduating now. Like I said, you came oh, back. Oh, fuck. I just graduated. Well, <laughs> okay. no. I said we're graduating. Like, like because now we have like, you know, before, we're, I think it was a little different setup. I had like a folding table. And then, you know, so I'm just trying to... Yeah. And it took me a minute to kind of get yeah. up and going. That and... stand used to be an iron. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, welcome. Yet again, cheers. Yeah. One more cheers. Welcome. One more cheers. Thank you Thank for you. having me. No, no, you're welcome. Um, so how... And then I, uh, I understand you're, you know, I had a... Um, I had ran into you at Secret Group. Which was a week ago? No, I'm sorry. It was two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, I ran into you at Secret Group. And then that's where we got reacquainted. And then I remember catching up. And then actually that night, you were actually coming from your other hosting show that you were hosting in Midtown, correct? Uh, Brass Tap, yeah. Right. Yeah, and then Brass that, Tap that, Open Mic. And then you were telling me that's going pretty well as well. It's been good, man, yeah. So it's been really good. So that's awesome, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then obviously then when I ran into you that Thursday night, obviously you were with uh, Enrique. And then it's uh, another counterpart, comic, yeah, yeah, comic yeah. that you're uh, yeah. really good, you know, partners with. Really good friend, good partner. Yeah, I love Enrique. Enrique Chacon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hilarious dude. And then obviously you started another podcast called uh, Fajita Fiesta. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, man, congratulations. So yeah, a lot. Of, you, yeah, yeah, you're staying busy. So that's awesome. Shoot, it's been fun, man. Nah, Enrique has been killing it, man. Nah, I'm proud of that dude. Yeah, because uh, he's been in the mix in Houston for a while, right? He's actually... Yeah, we started at the same time. So it's, uh, I think in January, it'll be five years. Wow. wow. Yeah. So five years. And then obviously now, uh, he hosted the... Uh... He hosts uh, Thursday Laughs. It's Correct. a showcase at the Secret Group Thursdays at 8 p.m. And then he runs the open mic right after. It's called Back of the Bus. Yeah. Yeah, and then I ran into him, and I got, I introduced myself to him. Yeah, and then, yeah, nice guy, great, yeah, yeah, great amazing guy. dude, yeah, yeah really, really good, good friend. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so yeah, congratulations, really, really great person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So congratulations on all that you know, going on, and then uh, it's pretty pretty exciting, everything, all that's going on, and all that's working out. But yeah, like and like I said on my end, I've been busy, and I, I know I've, I've I've missed you once or twice. And then you've been very busy. And we've then, been, yeah. we've been yeah. seeing each other. It's like, you know, yeah. th- things happen. Life, yeah. life happens. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, life does happen. Life does happen. And then actually, you know, also the Astros are here. Or Astros are. They're in this room, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just can't see them. They're behind the camera. <laughs> you know. Hey, Altuve. What's up, man? How, how you been? <laughs> so that, that game is going on. So I'm also just keeping an eye on that. So that's yeah. also something I'm keeping an eye on. But yes, today... It's a Wednesday night evening. Definitely uh, just having, you know, some cafe. Oh, yeah. Forbidden coffee? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm not a big coffee drinker, but, you know, I say, hey, why not tonight? Why not? Uh, I love I love coffee, especially with whiskey in it. If there's whiskey in it, it's great. Whiskey in it? Yeah. But is it uh, whiskey and coffee? So you don't need no it's liqueur Irish in there? coffee. But that's what I'm saying. It's more like a liqueur though, that you have, which would be Kahlua, right? Kahlua is good. Yeah, Kahlua is, Kahlua a, is good too. Yeah, it's like a kind of coffee. Uh, 
Because there's also ah, so you're a coffee connoisseur like me. Yeah. yeah well, no, no, I, I, I don't. Well, yeah, a little bit, but no, no, only <laughs> if it comes to the drink, like the drink itself, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But the, like, it just depends. But uh, buttery nipples. You ever heard of buttery nipples? Yeah, they're, they're amazing. Yeah, buttery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those are Bring a napkin though. Yeah, yeah. Bring a napkin. Yeah, back back in high school, my friend used to like you know, he'd be coming with everything like Kahlua, the whipped cream. I don't know. It's like, yeah, and like buttery he... nipples. <laughs> Which ones do you want, guys? <laughs> Come he on. Actually, well, he had actually the bag with a few things. Oh, yeah, man. I got everything. He had the Kahlua. He had all the ingredients to make his buttery nipples or whatever. So, I actually, I don't even know. Is it buttery nipples or is it buttery nibbles? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Those are two different things. Is it? Uh, buttery nibbles would be like a, nibbles is like uh, uh, dog food, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, that's what I'm thinking right now. Like, <laughs> dog food, okay. So it's not dog food, yeah. but obviously, so then it'd be buttery nipples, 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 yes. like nibbles, like there, yeah, okay, like areolas. Like, yeah, okay. I got the joke a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was just seeing where, how far I could go with that one, but then it just, yeah, there it goes. You know, so there, it just went that way. <laughs> But yeah, and then I actually, I remember we were uh, talking um, when I caught up with you on Thursday. Uh, we were talking about past jobs that, I don't know, somehow I came up with me working at Blockbuster at one point, you know, and then I was explaining about, I had to organize all these movies, so I would go through all these movies and look through all these movies. And all these movies would be like independent movies, new releases that I would have to organize. I would always have to put the movie behind, um, you know, if the movie was there, I would have to put the Reddit movie behind the case, the front case. Uh huh. And the one that was always just weird to me was spanking my monkey, which was very weird to me because it was just like, why? I, I mean, because, oh. but, but then I never wanted to be the guy at Blockbuster to pop up with the movie and then pop up with it and be like, all right, you know, and they go, Hey man, so you're going to rent this one. Yeah. Go ahead and put it on my account, you know, cause Every time you couldn't ring up your own movies, you always had to have people ring up your movies. So mm-hmm. then it would have to be like, okay, well, I have to, you know, let my manager ring up my movie. So this is like, you don't want to be the guy. I mean, even though I was interested in the movie for some reason, because it was called Spanking My Monkey, you know? And I was like, why? Because why? of the fact that you worked there. And it, yeah, well, I mean, also, you had, like I said, but I knew it was an independent film. I, I mean, it wasn't like it was in the dirty section of Blockbuster, which there really wasn't. I mean, there was actually a dirty section, but it was kind of weird as well because it would say adult section. It was always like uh-huh. soft, like, I guess, porn or whatever they would have. Soft court, yeah. I mean, like I said, I had to organize, even like I had to organize the um, kids' movies. I had to organize. At the time, they had the big ass fucking. What was it? The big ass disc. What was it? I don't even know what those things were. Video disc, but it was like a big video disc. You would actually put in a big, almost like a big CD player. So, anyways, it, it really? was yeah, it was just a one off of Kirby, the blockbuster off of Kirby that I worked at. And so, I mean, I so I saw all, I would see some movie, and then I would always have free, you know. You know, just right there on the new releases most of the time. So, you know, so it'd be pretty cool. What's the weirdest movie you ever saw? That was the movie that, 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 yeah, that was the weirdest movie I ever saw because I never actually got to see that movie until it was later when it came on, like, the independent film channel or something, like, on so, direct TV. Okay, so it was, it felt like Forbidden Fruit, you know? It, it, yeah, like, like it, I, I wanted to see it, and then, and then, uh, then, then I was just like, and then, and then I, then I, then I had, Wanted to see it even more because then I knew it was a. It ended up being a David O. Russell film. It was one of his early flicks that he actually made, and it was one of those dangerous flicks that he made. You know, and then he made it, and it was like very generic actors in there. You know, actresses or whatever. It wasn't like no main liners, but it was David O. Russell who would always push the envelope when it came to movies like that. Very controversial mm-hmm. type of movie, and it very was kind of very threw me back. It was like. A sense of irony where it was just like, wow, that's like that's fucking weird. And like, and I don't really want to see that movie again. It kind of like I always feel like a movie that if you watch a movie and it kind of like makes you like kind of like so I feel like, dirty I, as a human being. Like you're like like if something actually was like that to happen, you're just yeah. like, well, that I've had that feeling with like a couple movies. The one that like immediately comes to mind is like Old Boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the original version? Correct, correct, correct. That one just 
fucked me up. Oh, can I curse? Sorry. Mm-hmm. You get? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, okay. Mm-hmm. That would just fucked me up. Man. Yeah. It yeah. just, it, it, cause like, you, you've seen it, right? Well, I, I, I remember I explained that I had saw the movie back in the day, but it was pretty cool because I just knew it was a guy that got kind of screwed over. And he yeah. comes back kind of like a revenge style. Yeah, yeah. But then, to, but then, but then, but then, what always what stood out to me was the um, the poster of it, the actual poster of the of of the. It was it was just the way it was because I knew it was a South Korean movie, correct? Yeah. So the South Korean movie, I know, it, like him like walking. I think there was somebody on the side of him, and they had like these, you know, I guess the South Korean neon lights of him like walking maybe down the street or yo is there a north korean old boy <laughs> yeah right <laughs> it would be way worse dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would be way worse no he wouldn't be locked up he'd just be shot <laughs> yeah we would yeah it wouldn't, he wouldn't even but 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 you i mean but they, there is cool shit like that though in north korea though i'm sure yeah you don't know we don't yeah. know dude uh, but i i think there, there has to be there has to be something in there, like you know, they can't be all that correct every day, all day, and they probably get bored just being that correct. So I'm sure they probably maybe loosen up a little bit. No, nah. but maybe nah, not on that man. level. Maybe not on that level. Well, but I'm sure it old, depends. I'm with, sure they know about old boy though. Look, it, I, I would think some of them know about old boy. At least the cool ones though. Yeah, well, it's, well the ones that get free, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just it happens too, you know. You know, there's stories out there that like you hear like, "Oh my God, they do this, they do that," and it's just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, yeah. It's just it's crazy. No, but like old boy is great, and then licorice pizza. Licorice pizza. I don't know. Okay, so uh, I think it's on Amazon, and it's a story about a uh, like a fourteen to sixteen year old girl. Yeah, and she's babysitting like uh, this like twelve year old. Right. Right. And like they start talking right. you know, over the years. Like they start like being friends and stuff like that. Yeah. And then she starts asking her uh, sisters like, hey, is it weird that I hang out with this kid and his friends and stuff like that? And she's like, yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> and I think you know how it ends. OK, <laughs> <laughs> just from that. But it just freaked me the fuck out. What's the name of this movie? Licorice Pizza. Licorice pizza. Yeah, because you go through the whole story of like uh, them talking and then him like telling her, hey, I like you and stuff like that. And she's like, what's the relation between them two? They're just friends. Okay. But he keeps trying to like, you know, hit on her and stuff like that and trying to like, you know, play a game and stuff like that. And licorice pizza. Yeah, it it trips me out. Does that have anything to do with licorice? Nah. Okay. I don't, I don't. Maybe they eat licorice. I mean, they're, they're kids. You know. <laughs> they, okay. You know what kids do? They yeah, eat licorice yeah, yeah. and pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But it's just like it just that's how it's, yeah. Is it grooming? I don't know. Maybe I think so. But I was just like, what the fuck am I watching? It was one of those that I was watching out of like, you know, curiosity more than like enjoying the movie. I was like, how the fuck is this? Go- are they gonna? Fuck! Like why? Why? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Why? Why are they? Why is this happening? I was like, oh, this is it's it's yeah, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting movie. I, There's, I enjoyed the fact that it like made me feel something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's you know? what I'm saying. But like, I, I I feel like any movie that even makes you feel bad that you watched it, even after you watched it, like you're just like you're just like like ooh. Mm. Yeah. Like, well, it's based in the seventies. <laughs> the movie's based in the seventies, yeah. so I guess that's like that's their like. Hey, it happened yeah, I in mean, the past. Well, then, yeah, there was not a lot of knowledge and information then too. I would say probably not like now. Obviously, you know. I mean, I, I'm just saying like, yeah, it does give a glimpse. Like if you're saying that too, then maybe that put a twist on it. Like you were saying what you know, this kid hitting on her the whole movie. Yeah. Or um, another one I was gonna think about too was. Uh, uh, young people fucking. It's That's another, a movie. Yeah, it's called YPF, and that one's one about where it it actually hits up on different scenarios of uh, one couple that um, they pretty much the boyfriend likes his girlfriend to have sex with other men and him to watch. Then another scenario. Oh, he's of, a cuck. Huh? He's a cuck. Yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's that. And then there's another scenario where it's like an ex girlfriend, and then like 
an ex girlfriend hanging out with an ex boyfriend. They hang out one night. Then there's another scenario where it's just like this guy who's just a bachelor hanging out on a date, and then she she brings him home, you know. And then that's one scenario. Uh-huh. And these are all scenarios, and then they, it just plays out through the whole movie. It's kind of like a Pulp Fiction kind of style, so it goes back and forth. You know, it goes really? back and forth. Yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. But see, this is a movie I saw, like, and also when I was in the Navy on deployment. Because this guy, which I'm actually surprised. Was that, it like a foreign movie? No, it was an American movie. You know, and it, it's actually the girl from Cobra Kai, the girl who played, um, I guess, one of the characters' mother that was like a drunk, and she would bring different dudes back to, you know, the house, you know, and which would made the kid go be with Cobra Kai, whatever. She's actually in that movie, so it was like, but it was another independent movie, you know. So like, I guess going back to what I was saying originally, I know we've been going all over the place, but like going back was just like working that blockbuster, you know. You learned about. <laughs> <movies>. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 these are some of the movies that, that I guess that's what but but then also maybe that's what got me interested in a lot of movies too though you know I don't know yeah I mean yeah. I mean it's just like it's just, yeah I mean like I've been watching uh man I I started a a course at U of H it was like intro to screenwriting right yeah and I was like it was the best class ever because all I did was smoke weed and watch movies. Mm-hmm. That's all I did during the class and write about it, write scripts, try to write dialogue, figure out, you know, how scenes work, why, why are cuts are a certain place? You know, it's, I, you just get really deep into it. And I got so, I loved it. I loved learning how to write. Uh, and it was like, it was a cool experience. And it, I started watching Woody Allen recently. Yeah. That's what we talked about as well. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. watching Woody Allen recently and it's just like, yeah, yeah. A, it gave me a new view on comedy, you know? Because, yeah. like, I heard of him when I was younger, but I was just, like, uh, you know, the jokes and stuff like that, him getting with a young, younger woman. Yeah, yeah, it was, and, yeah, that was, yeah, they kind of overshadowed, like, what... I didn't know yeah, his yeah. work. I, I was just, like, I was always, like, why are they talking about this dude? I was just, like, oh, he's a great director? I was, like, oh, okay. he's a comedian? What? I was, like... Oh. So I, I I listened to some of his comedy. I yeah. saw you know Manhattan was pretty good. I, I like Manhattan a lot. Who's that with? Uh, obviously him, right? I gotta look that up. But obviously, it takes place in Manhattan, and the premise is what Woody Allen is. I just know that he's very he's dating a younger woman. Wow! But yeah. he also uh, I understand with Woody Allen films, he goes very. They're very almost like plays, but very descriptive in his okay, screenplays. So Diane Keaton. Oh, I see. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I've, I, yeah, yeah. Dude, I see why she was so famous back in the day. She's yeah. Well, she played actress. God. She played, you know, in Godfather too. You know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's. Fr- oh my God, she's great. Yeah. Uh, Mario Hemingway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Meryl yeah. Streep. Oh yeah, yeah. Ann Byrne, Michael Murphy, you know, like the way he structures the movie right. is, is a romantic comedy, but also there were layers to it. Yeah. There were layers. Like there's also like, uh, it's not just him, you know, dating a, a woman that's way younger than him. And like, but she's also very mature for her age, you know, and like she, it, you could see that. But then there's also like other people's lives that they go through, like other characters and you know friends and family and all that. Yeah. So like, I, I I don't know. I just like I seeing that now. I'm just like, oh shit. It okay. makes sense. This is great writing. No, it's it's great jokes too. Like there's there, there's a lot that goes into it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And like they just it just gave me a pre- an appreciation for screenwriting more. Just like to see like how can I make this you know have the thing that I'm good at and just like have it shine in another mm-hmm. format. Right, right, right. You know? No, but I mean, he was, I, I mean, I, I do know that even being younger when, when I was young, I always knew that he was famous for just having like these relative films, I guess, or just movies that were like always play, taking place in New York, right? Yep. I was in New York. Always in New York. And then, I always, in my mind, to be honest, I mean, it's nice to even think of that I haven't really watched a movie, but 
it's nice to hear things like that because when when I hear things like like for, obviously you're telling me this, I'm gonna now watch a Woody Allen film now. I'm actually probably gonna watch that one. <laughs> yeah, well, let's watch that one. And then uh, gonna... now me watching that one is just gonna you know make me because I mean actually my mind is fresh to it, so it's like oh you know something I never really explored. But I always remember when I was younger, it was always like fall time or like in yeah. New York it's always fall like uh, if, you're, always... if you're gonna watch uh, a Woody Allen movie yeah. the one you should watch is Annie Hall wow and like I don't wanna ruin it for the yeah, that's a an amazing movie Diane Keaton does a great job in it yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I was like just when I was watching her on screen I was just like hooked on I was like oh my god like you know this and the writing's great thought it was thought it was a really good movie but see, I mean, and and obviously, you know, like you said, I mean, he ended up uh, marrying his, actually his step, or actually his, his adopted daughter. Adopted, yeah. Adopted daughter. He ended up marrying her, and then obviously, I believe it, but it was, I mean, it, I think it was almost relative to that film, the way you explained it, like, you know. Yeah, I mean, you could see it in the writing. Yeah. Like, like you going back to the movies, it's like, oh, it's always been there. <laughs> <laughs> No way ever just saw it. Like, yeah. like do you like do you y'all not like do y'all not see do you not see this? Like, yeah, I see it. Like, I see it, like deep in there, like, yeah. like moving in there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just it's how people are. It's just, like, no, maybe... it's just a movie. It's just fantasy. And when it actually happens, oh shit, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> but I think it's also like a third eye, maybe you know, maybe it's just yeah. that that third eye, like like you know, it just. You're like, didn't nobody see that? Like, I saw, I, I see it, but nobody yeah. else sees it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That is pretty. Uh, uh, but like, I, I, I really tripped out yeah. because when hey, he, at least we can say he commits to the bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he does. He does commit to the bit. Yeah, he he, he goes in all in a hundred percent. A lot of. Uh, South Park Mexican did the same thing too. Yeah, uh, on the radio, radio, radio. <laughs> yeah, he he, and and you know who's to say? I remember, no, dog. I remember back in the day they were talking about it because like I, he was like way popular. South Park uh, Mexican. South Park Mexican. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're talking about the rapper, right? Yeah. Okay, so I remember back uh, when I was like middle school days, he was like popping off like in where the little hood that I was uh, in a leaf. Like people, like all my friends and stuff like that, we were just they were like, yeah, SPM, SPM, SPM. Then after they found out about him going to jail and all that shit, they were just like, ah, shit, no, no, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, they all they they canceled him. And no, they the, ca- yeah. he like, he yeah. got canceled yeah. <laughs> back in the day. He canceled himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did kind of cancel himself. Yeah. That's how you. Yeah. That's how it used to be. Why can't we go back to that where people actually cancel themselves instead of just going like, no, you made me feel bad. No, you're canceled. You're a creep. You're canceled. Like, come on. Uh, but it is very common. For stuff like that to happen with artists, you, if you notice, there's a trend. I mean, we can even go back to <clears throat> Elvis Presley. That's the same deal. Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis went off, like, kind of off the little off to the side a little bit there. They, you know, went for a younger girl, 14, that was his cousin. But it was the fashion of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but also, but also, it was also common and okay for a white guy to do that too. Very really well i mean when you think about it at the time that jerry lee lewis when that happened they didn't prosecute him like as in r kelly like look what they did to r kelly Duh. now well, r kelly's another level because apparently there was like other women involved and he had like groups girls are being brain i mean who knows i really don't even know i'm not look, that we can go knew, all over the place he knew. <laughs> <laughs> he knew. well no no see i i i don't never i don't never <laughs> go with i go with what i see what I know, <laughs> and if I'm there, then I'm there. But if I'm not there, then I just go by what I possibly know, and yeah. maybe what I've been heard, and maybe what I possibly seen. I've never seen no P tapes or no seen no shit like that. But oh my, my but God. but my but my whole point is the fact that. But you look up young people fucking. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the name of a movie. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> totally different. Totally different. But but it is all relative though. But it just depends which avenue you're gonna go. 
But R. Kelly being in general, like, like, but like I, like I said, at that time, it was expected. Uh-huh. It was expected, and that, nothing was really ever wrong with it because of the fact that Jerry Lewis was famous. He was a famous, you know, piano player, you know, very different rock and roll. Elvis Presley, he went to Germany. I'm just basing that part on the movie, but it wouldn't, I mean, but I always knew that uh, Priscilla Presley was younger than he was. And that fool was just that fool was just like that. Man. Yeah, we already know that. It's just, it's just, look, we, we can even it. we can even go back to like we can believe it on whatever. It's just that was how it was back then. Sometimes like it, it's just people just allowed it. It's, you just gotta be famous, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta be famous first to even do it. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, those people realize they're like, I'm famous, <laughs> so I can do whatever the fuck I want right now. I can do whatever I want, you know? We can go from <laughs> there. <laughs> Woody Allen, famous! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kevin Spacey, famous. Famous. Yeah. Will Smith, just, famous. And then that's the biggest thing because it, it's like it happens in, you know, in the regular world. But like nobody's talking about it, not because they're not famous. Yeah, so that's a, that's a nice, that's a nice... Uh, yeah, you, we can go somewhere for that. With with that, I mean, like, uh, just being famous gives you the right to do a lot of things. Being famous gives you free things. Being famous gives you right to fuck up. And then, yeah. whoa, well, actually, not yeah, lately. Saw, yeah, you're just, okay, let's, let's move on to the other thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess we're going all over the place. <laughs> or, or, or we can use an example, Kanye West. Famous. But Kanye yeah, West, famous. But, but still rich. But not as rich, and I mean, he was, you know, Apple. He was a billionaire. Apple uh, dropped him. I believe Adidas, Adidas. dropped him. A lot of companies <laughs> Dude, just dropped him. I, you know what? It, you know when it's going to get really bad when Trump drops him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know. He, he know he's nah, gonna but it's going to be out. after elections, though. <laughs> not, not during elections. After elections. After elections. Uh, after elections. <laughs> he's going to drop him. Oh, but yeah, so... that. But but that that with Kanye. Yeah, Kanye. That, I mean, a lot of things are happening right now. A lot of things. It is what it is. I mean, I I don't. I understand that he has a mental illness. And that he doesn't want to take his pills. Yeah. And he's a human being just like, you know, either one of us. So, like, if you're not going to take care of yourself, then bad things are going to happen. You know, he's, it's, he's got a mental illness. That's it. I, yeah. I have a family member that has the same mental illness. Yeah. What what illness is it, though? Bipolar. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I feel he still has to be responsible as a human being to notice that if people are getting upset, you know, I, mean, I have this look, you know, kind of got, you got to look around in the room and be like, uh, are they upset at me? It's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the people are upset at you. So, I mean, I, yeah, I like the, the, the other, just, the, that's mania, you know, no, 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 it's no. Mania. Yeah. It's being manic. It's yeah. manic in a way. Manic, manic is like you roll, you roll, you roll. You think you're in the right, but you're, you're really not. And no. then, but, but the thing is, is I feel like when you have a platform as the platform he does, which yeah, hats off to like Lex Friedman, you know, I watched that podcast and. And when he had Ooh, him on I, there, I haven't watched it yet. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm it's pretty. To watch yeah, it's it, pretty. Yeah. And, and he challenges him pretty well. But that I've seen, being said, I've seen some clips here and there, and I uh, and I, I want to watch the whole video now. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm interested in that. Yeah. That being said, I mean, it, it was definitely things that he needed to hear, and he was definitely told by. Yeah, he was definitely told by a educated person with knowledge to be able to tell him what he needed to tell him. Here, here, here. Yeah, I will switch. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the cafe. Cafe? <sighs> or is it cafe? 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 Cafe. Cafecito. Cafe. Cafe. Aquí tengo un cafecito. Cafe. Cafe. God, dude, this coffee's got a lot of bubbles. Cafe. Cafe. Ooh. Ooh, that's hot. Cheers. That's hot. Ooh. Yeah, it's very hot. <coughs> 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 oh, 
Ah, you alright? Yeah. Ooh. Hot. Very hot. Ooh. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, going from... Where's the money? Movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, right here. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. All right. All right. Wow, it's so easy to rob you. Come on, man. <laughs> Grow nah, a backbone. Nah, man, nah, nah, fuck you. Get the nah, fuck out of my house. Nah, <laughs> like, what the nah, fuck? No, nah, of course not. Of course not. Nah, I, I can never do that. That's it, Joe. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> oh, just me? <laughs> you yeah. don't do it for anybody else? Everybody else, you their ass your beat. But that <laughs> No, no, no. I appreciate that. Did you know this? Is like, I always like like to have things cleared away or like put away. It's weird. Oh, it's very neat. Yeah. It's very neat. Like I said before, yeah, like I put it to the back, or put it over there. I don't know because I, I have like all, this like, all table. this stuff. I like this table. Like I told you before. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I mean, it goes back to uh, old Grampy Graham, great, great. Great Navajo. Um, this is actually uh, from comes from a tree from the uh, hills and the mountains, and it was cut out by my great 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> over the years and generations. <laughs> nah, man, it's just a door from the my dad didn't use, so I just turned it into a table and I wanted some legs to it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the See, story. I was, I was, I was, I was trying to attempt like yeah. the whole like. Oh, you had me story. until you went great, 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 great. I, great, I, I great. know I fucked it up, and then I was like, oh <laughs> man, I was like, god damn it! I, like, I just fucked that away. I was like, god damn it! <laughs> I was like, shit. Okay, All right. All right. but yeah, it's just an old door. Uh, Dad said he was going to use it, and never used it, and now it's my table. And I don't know why I keep knocking, but I'm not going to because it was a door. You know? Hello. <laughs> And then I also went ahead and did the, uh, where I was explaining the, I, I, I took a, where they used to, they used this thing called a flamethrower and this flamethrower, which you can get at Home Depot, which is pretty good flamethrower. Well, actually, I'm not advertising for Home Depot, but I'm just saying you can use this flamethrower <laughs> and this flamethrower is used to fix I'm advertising. Roofs. Go get it at Home Depot. Go get your flamethrower at Home Depot right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! It's Home Depot. They're gonna kill us. They're gonna kill us. Oh, whoa, whoa, they know whoa. what we're talking about. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh, What's shit. going on? What's going oh, on? Oh shit! Home Depot's after us right now. <laughs> uh, I used to work at Home Depot. That's crazy. And I'm wearing their colors. I think you had said that. I think you had said that. Yeah. Oh shit, man! So uh, the oh yeah, but you which Home Depot was the Bel Air one? No, nah, it was the one. Uh, I guess I'll tell you afterwards, but I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, t- tell you more. But I'll tell you the story about it. So, I was working as a cashier, and I think it was like 2016. Yeah, right. I was working as a cashier, <clears throat> right? And I'm outside in the garden section one day, and I'm I'm ringing people out. Then this dude comes by. It's like a uh, like a older black man right and he's just walking by he's got some stuff in his hands he's just walking and then what he puts down on the register is a shovel trash bags bleach you know <laughs> <laughs> like anything you can do to like to dig something up like and i was such a freaking idiot at that time that i was just like oh shit he's probably gonna clean something like yeah. really bad or whatever and i was just like okay so i'm ringing him out and i give him his total and then he's like, oh, okay. He gets his card out, but he also grabs a cloth out of his, like, pocket, right? Uh-huh. So he puts his, like, cloth over his hand. He grabs the cards, swipes it, boom. Puts the cloth on his hand again. He puts in his code. And I was just like, okay. He grabs the pen with the cloth. I was like, oh, shit. He definitely killed somebody. <laughs> and then I was just, at that moment, I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> so... As he's walking out, I was just like, I was thinking about like, okay, if I'm watching him and I'm just like, I just want to know if he gets inside of a white Ford Bronco. 
<laughs> no, but he got instead of a Honda Civic, so he was fine. <laughs> was it white? It wasn't white though. Yeah, it was a white. It was a white Honda Civic. <laughs> no, I think it was a, a blue Honda Civic. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It still can correlate with white, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, so or... yeah, that's an that's a true story. Like that's a tr- actual true story that actually happened. I was just like, what the fuck? I, am I aiding and abetting a fucking murder right now too? <laughs> no, Home Depot is <laughs> helping <laughs> this customer. <laughs> <laughs> Home Depot killed now, that family. <laughs> now I now I understand why you didn't want to tell me which specific Home Depot you were at <laughs> you were, cause for a minute I know that like, oh, I'm okay. not saying no 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 You're I'm right. not saying it actually right. happened. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you which Home Depot. Uh, I'm, tell you later. Okay. I'm not saying like like I'm not I don't want to tell you what happened, but like I was also searching the news the next day after that too. I was like, okay, family woman, uh, like who's who got killed? <laughs> was what like, year was this? 2016. Wow. Yeah, tw- oh, sorry, 2016. Sorry. Wow. I am too chill. I like. I like. I like going uh, back. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm. I think. I. I think my my voice is okay. I think you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just making sure because can this you hear is, me? I mean, for this being that. Can, 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 finally, can you oh, hear yeah, me? Oh yeah, I hear you perfect. Okay, I hear you cool. perfect. But <laughs> whatever you were just like assuming. No, nah, but I still wanted to cheers you on. I mean, of course yeah. I'm I'm overriding, but I wanted to cheers again because uh, you you got the audio file. Working and obviously uh, look at like, it. It's I working. Got the word of the day or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be badass because if I had like a badass production team, I was like, yeah, put like a star on the screen like, Ding, or something like that. Yeah. Like it would almost remind me of being uh, in China and the TV shows they would have was like kind of animated and shit. It was really weird. It what was, was it almost called? it was it wasn't as animated as Japan because China was a little bit more regulated. Japan was a little bit more like open, uh-huh. but it was still like kind of a uh, like the shows were just weird. It was just weird. W- weird how like describe it like because I've never seen them before. Just very conservative. It's always like conservative. Like like you wouldn't see anything like. Oh well, yeah, it's China. Yeah, last <laughs> year or anything like that. It was just very conservative looking on the screens. But then again. I guess at the same time, I, what I was saying was, I guess it was more I was thinking of Japan type of shit. If we had like a production uh-huh. team, then giving you the gold star, it would be like that. I don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> well, the movie's in China. Uh, the other one that I saw in China was the... Actually, no, I didn't see that one. No, there was one that was real famous, and it was... With the girl that was from the the only one I saw in there was in China was Miami Vice, and that was with that girl that was in Miami Vice, and she was the actual Chinese actress, and she was looked down upon. Actually, the, they showed the movie in China, and when they showed the movie in China, they took out the sex scenes that she was with Colin Farrow because it was forbidden in a way. Oh, so did you see that movie first, or? Or that one after? I saw it. The, uh, I saw it during. The American in, version. No, I, I saw it when I was over there. Uh-huh. I believe. No, you saw it again. Or did you already see it beforehand <laughs> and then go into this? To be honest? But see, but see over there when How I... How would you know there were sex scenes if you've never seen this movie before? No, no, but over there it was... Because I can't really relate... Because they had burnt DVDs that you actually had DVD burnt shops. Like, uh-huh. It was like you walk into like little... Like you'd be walking on the street and it's like you go down and they're like... It's almost like looks like rental video places that you rent movies. Except you go in there you buy DVDs. So you go in there and then you like pick one. And then you go to them. And you went to the Chinese blockbuster. <laughs> but then it's all, it's all like, it's all, they just give you, they give you whatever. Uh-huh. Like, because you, you go and pick it and then you go to them and they go to like this thing and they give you the movies. Uh-huh. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But most of the time they do work. Uh-huh. And if it's a very common one, then they work. But all it was ever was just a file from, from the internet that they compressed into a DVD and then you could play it in your computer. And then your computer could probably play that region, hopefully. And if not, you play in the DVD player that you have, in, in you know, at, at your hotel to your computer, you know, or to your TV. I'm sorry. So it was, but my whole point was to say that like, it was a lot of like movies you can get on hand 
and see the actual sex yeah. scenes if you wanted to see them. So her name is Gong Li. <clears throat> yeah, Gong Li. So, but but you had it was see that's the whole thing over there is like you had access to a lot of things, but then again you did not have access to a lot of things. It was very weird, and if you had access to it, which was the DVD movie somehow. It was like little things like that were overlooked. You know, they're not going to be that anal about everything. But so, but at the same time, but yeah. Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell are in, in this one, right? Yeah. Okay. And they played Tubbs and yeah, yeah, Crockett, yeah. you know. Tub, okay. Crockett, Crockett and Tubbs from the old 80s Miami Vice. I just got I just saw Collateral recently. Have you seen that? Yeah, it's it's a it's the same director as it's the Michael Michael Mann who really? directed. It. Yeah, Michael Mann directed this. So it's the same same style, same style as as um, as Miami Vice was, which is very. I think it's. I love Miami Vice, the new one. That that one's a pretty cool one. I mean, I haven't seen it. I mean, I feel like if you're gonna be cool about being a narcotics officer in Florida, that that you're gonna be. You know, Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell, you know? Yeah, they're coolest, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have some style, you know? You're going to have your beard kind of, you know, whatever, you know? Like, uh-huh. You know, or the kind of grungy, whatever. You know, you're going to be in Miami like that. So, uh, I just saw the movie Collateral recently, again. Like, I just, like, uh, it's going back to movies. I've just been, like, going back and watching, like, other movies that I've seen when I was younger and now. And see, like, how different they are. Yeah. You know, like, what do I remember? What is, like, what from me when I was younger was feeling then to what I'm feeling now and stuff like that. So, I like Collateral a lot. It's a really good movie. Fucking Tom Cruise is in it, too. I was just like, like, Tom Cruise is so good at enthralling you, you know, like, bringing you in and just making you think. Oh, yeah, like, believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's just believe. A, just he's, just like, he's yeah, he is what he is. He's a crazy assassin guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, my God. But, like, it just, like, also, Jamie Foxx's character, he's a cab driver. And I was just, like. Like a regular guy? No, no, no. He's, like, a, not even a regular guy. This guy's, like, he's, like, he's a simp. You know, he's, like, an incel. It's, yeah. it's like, and he gets this girl's number, and, like, he's just, like, ah, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And then throughout this whole movie, it's just, it's just the whole motive just to get him to call her. And then it turns out that she is one of the people that this assassin is trying to kill, you know? Right. Like, spoiler alert. Sorry. I don't know if you haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. I, actually, I haven't yeah. never watched that movie all the way through. I've always watched bits and pieces. Yeah. But, but, then, but like, I always thought it was cool. But yeah. I was, that was so dumb. Like, this dumb dumb guy's like, he's like, come on, here. Uh... I'm an assassin. He's like, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't do it. No, no, I gotta, no, no, no. Is that when they're inside the club, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, give me that gun. Yeah. Like, I, I just, <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't have, uh, no, no. No, no, no. He did a great job. He did a great job in it. He was amazing. I just hate the, the character that was written. You know, it could have been done differently. But I loved Jamie Foxx's performance in that, too. But I think that was after. I think that was after Miami Vice, and then Jamie Foxx got with Michael Mann. No, Jamie Foxx is great. Uh, but Michael Mann, he has movies like that. Like he, I know he has another two or three cool ones that are kind of relative to that. Because like his, like like the action sequences that he has with Tom Cruise and with the guns, that's pretty 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 cool looking. Yeah, I mean it's pretty on point. And then it's also. I always think when it's close range on the videoing of stuff like that and not from like too far away because they want to like catch the real, I guess the realness. I feel like, I mean, he captures it very well. I, I it's just, it's badass because there's actually scenes in Miami Vice where I'm like, damn, that's badass. And then I, I even think he blends in the Coast Guard. He blends in the Miami Vice die day. I mean, I, I feel like, He's very close to it. People can say, oh, yeah, it's still like movies or movies. Like, you know, it's very exaggerated. But mm. I feel it's exaggerated to the point where it's all compressed into an hour, two hours, I guess, the movie. But things yeah. like that do happen, I think, in real life, you know, drug boats going down the Florida Keys, like, hauling okay, ass. Here's, and, here's what I feel like I, I mean, feel like it happened once. And everybody just fucking keeps talking about it, you know? Well, uh, yeah. You don't see that in everyday life. 
<laughs> really? There's always okay. So we're all, people are always cops are always chasing drug boats in the middle of the fucking day. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't always happen. Or, or kicking, uh, going and stealing their their drugs, and you know. Yeah, that like that's how I feel. Like, uh, wow, still zero zero. Because you you always hear stories about like New York. Back in like the seventies and the sixties, like and it's just like, oh yeah, like oh don't don't fuck with him, he'll cut your throat, you know. Like it happened one time, and they just keep talking about it. It just is like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess keep on talking about it, and then it just gets old after a while. Right? It gets old. <laughs> That's the reason why I brought it back up again. <laughs> I guess we we started the whole podcast talking about movies, so I guess we. I mean, I love movies. Yeah, movies, movies. But but that's what we had caught up with last time when we were talking, and that's what I, I'm trying to relate it to. You know why we're having this meeting, and I I like to correlate things together. So yes. I'm saying once again, I love you, Jamie Fox. You did great <laughs> in Collateral. Okay, I'm just critiquing the writer. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that one, but but it but that that I, was that I wonder is that Antoine Fuqua I think on that one I'm not sure on which one Collateral mm, I but, don't know uh, directors see I'm always keen on directors oh, I love watching directors I should like I'm, I'm getting into like I you, I you gotta memorize <coughs> names and I'm no. trying to get better at that but I'm horrible at remembering people's names well well but but I I feel like. Now that you see it, I bet you now that you'll you'll see you'll be like, you know what? That kind Notice of, things like, a little bit more. Well, know? well, I feel that even when it comes down to artists, art, and then this is what I'm I, I've learned now, I guess, is that artists in general always have same styles. You know what I'm saying? Like they have like their their styles are generally the same, but but if they get different material, they're still going to use their same style as in. Uh, another example I want to use is like Flatliners. Flatliners in in the movie it was uh, uh, directed by Joel Schumacher, and Joel Schumacher had a style. I guess in some of his scenes in Flatliners, do you remember that movie with? No. And, okay, so. Flatliners is another movie. Oh yeah, and and, and Flatliners is like with uh, Keith. Keith Keith for Sutherland or no? I don't know if it's Keith for Sutherland or Keith for Sutherland or is it Donald? the guy from? Uh... What is it? Young Guns? 24. No, Yeah, 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 yeah. Cuba Southern. Yeah. So he comes out of this movie. This movie, Flatliners, is based... <laughs> is, this movie, Flatliners, is based on... Uh, he wakes up and, and, and says that... At the very beginning of the movie, he says he wakes up and he says, today would be a good day to die. Which is very crazy. Because <laughs> I wouldn't say that shit in the morning. <laughs> No, I said every time I wake up in the morning, today be, be a good day to today die. Today be a good day to die. And no, that's usually you know, what he fucking like says. Tuck, you know what I usually say? <clears throat> Fuck, I'm still alive. <laughs> well, no, I usually, when I wake up, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm alive. Okay, cool. All right, all right. And then, you know, I go, and then I go use the bathroom, you know? <laughs> okay, so then back to what I was saying. So, like, in this movie, there's a scene where it's just like, he has this thing with neon painted walls. And then his, Ooh, that's hot. and then his, <laughs> and then his camera zooms in, and it's just like black light look, like a black light look with neon paintings and this and that, and it's just so weird because in the movie, like I said, it's based on Kiefer Sutherland where he's saying that that day he is gonna die because hardline, flatliner, flatliner, flatliner. So the premise of the movie, the 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 whole point of the movie is that these college kids are pre-med students and they're pre-med students. So they want to, I don't remember any names or anything at all. Okay. Kevin Bacon's in that movie too. Wow. Julie Roberts. I've never seen it. No, Kevin Bacon, Julie Roberts. Uh, no, Alec Baldwin's brother, which would be, I don't know. One of the Baldwin's and there's a lot of them. So yeah, there is uh, a lot of, them. so the, the movies that they're they're they, that Kiefer Southern has volunteered to, to go ahead and, and get induced and pretty much go under, which mm. is pretty much go flatline, which he's not breathing, and then they bring him back, and then they, and then then the the whole the whole premise from the whole thing goes then that everyone wants to get a dip in on how it feels to be dead for a little bit, which is fucked up. So then 
from there, the whole movie, like I said, so then later I see then Joel Schumacher, the same director, gets Batman Forever with Val Kilmer. Val, Val Kilmer. I'm yeah, sorry, Val Kilmer. Okay, that's right. And then there's another scene where it's Robin that comes up. Yeah. And there was a whole big neon no, scene. I remember. A big yeah. neon scene. And it was the same scene. I, I swear to God, if you watch that scene and you go back to Flatliners, there's a scene in there. And all, all the big differences is that Batman Forever looks better because it's actually better technology. Yeah. Probably had better production. Probably the had more money. Flatliners is in China. Yeah, or I don't know where it was, but it, but it still looked raw. But I mean that <laughs> back in China, back in China. Ooh. Wow, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. So, so my whole point, You're my so whole hot. point, my how whole... hot is your coffee right now? <laughs> it's so hot. Oh. Yeah. Mine's at a, it's, it's medium hot. <laughs> so that that was the whole point of this whole I, I I would say conversation of this podcast was saying that how generally some most artists have your own styles and the most of these artists they keep if they keep their styles going you can see the the even with Dave Chappelle Dave Chappelle you go back and I, I was, uh, like in terms of like so you say Dave Chappelle who else. Well, Dave, like Dave Chappelle, I would say his thing has always been race, and he's always been able to put like a twist on race where it just it's funny and it's the truth, but it's so funny because it's like the way he paints your. I, 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 this is another conversation I, I think we kind of had how, uh, or maybe I'm thinking of something else, but how he can, is it, is how it? it's just painting the picture of the <clears throat> scenario. And then the mind, and then the, the the audiences are having in their mind of of having this scenario that this comic is painting, but it's so relative that they can actually see it, that it can actually happen. But obviously, it didn't happen because he's actually you know exaggerating about the whole scenario. But it's so funny because it's so relative as well to what's going on at the time. And I feel like race is what made him famous is making fun of how sometimes. Races can be very over certain races who come across each other can be very <laughs> where it comes over to a very uh wrong way, but then again, he can make he, he twists it and it's like, yo, man, like it's just funny though when you really think about it. <laughs> I love Dave Chappelle. Oh, like, yeah, I, I, I love his the way he, like you said, puts <clears throat> the scenario out and you see it in your mind and you do understand like like you get it like yeah, yeah. it's funny and for I like he, I was like first introduced to George Carlin and then after that I saw Dave Chappelle yeah you know and I like uh killing killing him softly you know that was it's still like in my top 5 yeah. As specials. Yeah. Still. Like, I just, I love it so much. And he, there was this, uh, in the actor studio, you know, episode he did. Yeah. That was very, yeah. And, that was and, awesome. But he described that the story that he did when he was in the limousine, uh-huh. you know, it was, it didn't, it didn't happen. He yeah. made it all up. Yeah. And he said that. And he described that. How he made the joke was he observed things in the real world, you know, like, like well, but, gun go, go, but go back to what the limousine was, the scenario that was. Oh, okay. Observed. So he's a he's in a limousine, and uh, he's uh, being driven back to you know, to his hotel after a gig, and then uh, the limousine driver was like talking to him, was like, "Hey, man, what's up? Like, yeah, how's it going tonight? Oh, okay." And it's like he's telling him like, "Hey, uh, he gets a phone call. Somebody calls him." And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I'm I'm coming through. Let me come through right now. I I, I can't do the joke justice, you know. No, 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 like, no, no, no. But but this is the basis of it because yeah. I I, I kind of you had to remind me. Okay, about, so yeah. like you know, he he drives to the. He's like, no, no, fuck that, no, I'm coming right now. And he's like, he drives to the hood, right? And he's in the <laughs> he's in the limousine and he's sitting down. And he's just like, oh shit, okay, uh, gun store, gun store, liquor store, gun store, oh shit, I'm in the hood. 
And yeah. the whole point of the joke is like t- being taken to the hood, you know, without your knowledge, without your consent, just abruptly. Yeah. Like you have to be prepared to be in the hood. Right, right, right. You right. know? And that's the whole premise of the joke. And like he talked about how, yeah, he saw these things in the real world and he just like put it all together. Yeah. You know, talking about being in the hood, talking about being a black, like all that stuff. Yeah. He, like he, he just like, boom. And it re- yeah, then of course, but but that's what I was saying. It's like his, I I feel, I don't know, like just me now. I'm an artist. I can say that, and I feel everybody like has to. It's just like I, I but like even when like you were telling me about making this table, like I feel people tell me like, hey man, you're an artist because you made this table from scratch and you had this view in your head and you just made it happen. I'm like, yeah, but I don't see it like that. I just feel. Uh, and, and and I guess I'm all over the place again, but I, I'm going back to where I'm saying a lot of artists don't see themselves as artists sometimes, and maybe that's the catch, I guess, to well, keep, I, keep keep that going because I feel like if you just act and you just keep doing what you're doing, well, yeah, yeah, but going it's back gonna, to it, like seeing like the reality of it and how he is able to create these jokes and right, right, you know, make it seem real. When I grew up in the hood, I was, you know, I went through some of the stuff like that, like seeing like uh, drug dealers on the corner and shit like that, like gang members all the time. Like I, I, I lived through it too because I grew up in A Leaf, so like I saw, I saw it, but like it just like changed something in me when I saw like, oh shit, you can take, you can go on stage and just talk about your life. <laughs> it's like fuck it, but but I still feel it, it has to do with you like understanding, like you know how to bring it to and make it interpret. To, like you were saying, like you told me that, like to make it, you have to make the viewer or, or audience member see and see what you see, yeah, and see the funniness, and see see what's funny. You got to be able to give it. them the context, right? Right. That, oh, that's true. It's true. The biggest problem for me uh-huh. in my life is I know what the fuck I think I'm is funny, but when sometimes right. when I say it what I'm thinking isn't what's coming out. I'll just like say something real quick, but he, it, sometimes it's a lie and I catch myself and I'm like, why the fuck did I say this shit? Yeah. It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing for me, you know? And I'm, I don't know. Maybe it's like a people pleaser thing when somebody asks you something like, can you do this? And I'm like, yes, 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 I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But really, I just, don't, I don't have the time or I'm really not interested in doing it, but I just say yes either way. Right. And it fucks me over at the end because I, my problem has always been apathy. I just realized this recently. Apathy. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. And I don't mean that in the sense is like, you know, when people are like, ah, oh, fuck this, fuck that. I'm going to do what the fuck. No, like I, I literally don't give a fuck. Right. Like I just stop caring about things, everything, you know? And I didn't, I didn't feel like this when I was younger. It's, this is different because when I was younger, growing up in the hood and going through all this stuff that I, I went through, there was a lot of trauma, right? Right. So recently, this, this this apathy is just like inside of me, and I was like, why the fuck don't I give a shit? Why the fuck do do, do I have nothing to live for right now? Right. Like why? Why? Okay, what am I doing? I'm doing comedy. Okay, I'm. What else? I'm living my life. Okay, do I got a job? Okay, I used to, but now I'm like, you know, it's like right, all right. these things happen in your life, and you're just like, what the fuck is this for? Yeah. And the reason why I'm thinking that is because I somebody close to me passed. You know, yeah. a friend, a friend yeah. passed, and I was just like, oh shit, that's why I went through apathy. Yeah. That really it fucks me bad. But because that happened, I learned a lot about myself. Yeah. Over these past like two months. Like it's just I just went deep inside myself, like what the fuck am I doing in life? You know? But but I I, I also feel like um even like other old school comics I've like tried to follow and watch, like George Carlin. Um, <laughs> um I I get George Carlin gave advice to Carrot Top. Carrot Top had a little story, and the story was that he came across him, and 
Carrot Top was kind of like, man, I bomb and this and that. Time from time, I, you know, people, I feel people don't like me or people. And it was just a lot of questioning of himself took George Carlin. Of all people, he was, you know, venting to George Carlin. And I guess almost like questioning his art artists or his, how, like, like you were saying, like, I felt like Carrot Top was almost Carrot, like, Carrot Top was almost questioning his view of the world or how he views the world. So it's like a reciprocal kind of deal. And George Carlin got mad at him and said, you know, like pretty much fuck them, you know, like don't give a fuck. <laughs> don't worry about what the fuck they think. Just do what you do. Keep doing what you're doing. And then Carrot Top like sat there and apparently George Carlin walked off. And this is on from another podcast I watched. And it was, I think Steve-O's. Steve-O was, you know, asking and then, Carrot Top gave you this story. I mean, it kind of hit me, hit me right there because I felt like you got to have enough confidence just to, like you were saying, like you don't give a fuck. It's not like saying, you're not saying like fuck society, fuck world, but you're just saying, I have my feelings. I have what I feel is what I understand. I have interpreted this, yeah, what, what yeah. I've been through, or this and that, up and down. But then I'm going to twist it because I'm going to make it funny now because I just want to make y'all fucking laugh and I want to keep things going. I, I mean, I, I want to, but me, also, I mean, it depends. Though. For I don't know. me, it's like, uh, <clears throat> I love cracking jokes. I just love, you know, hanging out with friends, just having fun, making fun of each other, like <laughs> just saying whatever the fuck you're thinking, like just, just being around and yeah. just having fun, right? I love that. But like, there comes a certain point for me when I'm on stage. I'm just like, okay, so am I trying to have fun or am I trying to work on jokes? Yeah. Because I've realized that's different. Yeah. And it's like I have to. Whew, excuse me. I had to... <laughs> Ugh, man, it's coffee, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this yeah. coffee bubbles up on you for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Might be some yeast in this coffee. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it's still hot though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Woo. No. What you were saying. Uh fuck, what was I saying? <laughs> you were talking about how the jokes explain it. Oh yeah, having more fun than I am uh working on material. Yeah. So uh because like so what what I've been what I, what happened recently is like I was just crowd working a lot and riffing, you know, when I was on stage, I was just like either go up, I would go up blank with nothing on my mind. And I've done this recently too. Like I, I go up blank now and I don't have any jokes that I, I, I I'm thinking of at that moment. I don't That's have anything. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's so fucking scary, dude. Yeah. It's crazy. And I just tell myself, just go up and have the, as much fun as you can. Yeah, but that's being yourself. In a sense, but I was doing that so much that when I would actually tell a joke, but bomb. <laughs> no, real talk, it would bomb. Yeah. So that's interesting. I was watching a podcast. Uh, <laughs> shout out Flagrant uh, with Andrew Schultz and uh, Bobby Kelly was on. Bobby Kelly, great New York comic. Right. And, hilarious both of them both hilarious and he was talking bobby kelly was talking about that same problem where he was crowd working and he was having so much fun but when he got to the jokes they would flatline and uh from what i got from the episode he was talking about he he was uh saying you gotta be able to mix them right you know you gotta be able to like either crack jokes and then make it seem like the joke you're telling is something you just like you know thought of right then and there yeah like, there's the magic. I was like, well, it's almost like improv, right? Imp- well, mixing improv with material. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And I started doing that more. And last Monday, I was at, uh, shout out, Axel Rad, Punchline Mondays. Awesome. Hosted Axel by Rad. Jeff Joe. Yeah. Uh, so, I was at Axel Rad, right? And I was like, it's a great room. Yeah. Great room. Like it's it's perfect for comedy. Yeah. Like it's like small, intimate, you know, everybody's together. There's the room's dark and then like awesome. people are just like sitting each other. Like yeah. it's a great atmosphere for it, right? And I feel like that's when comedy is at its best. 
and it's like it's a, it's an amazing place. I, I love that spot. So I'm on stage and I'm, I feel so comfortable there now. Mm-hmm. And because I'm comfortable, uh, I'm a lot like and Jeff like he, he's like, hey, if you want to do more time, do more time, you know. Wow. And I'm just like working, working like every Monday. I'm there. I'm just like working, working, trying to figure out you know this show and where I want to take it and stuff like. That. And I got to a point where I got tired of telling my jokes that we're doing bad. Uh-huh. Like, I, I could, I could feel the bomb. Yeah. And then I could feel when the joke bombed or when my performance was off, you know? Cause like, uh, when I first started, I was like, I didn't know how to do comedy. I mean, I, I still don't know. Fuck that. I'm going to say that right now. I still don't know how to fuck that. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know? And I think I'm always going to be like that. And it's just like, you're always figuring when you think you're perfect, you, you, you lost. Like you, when you get comfortable, you lost. Um, there's a another thing that I can relate to would be uh, Rick Rubin, famous producer. Love Rick Rubin. Yeah, yeah. But he says that, and uh, I don't. I kind of relate to the guy because the guy, like his voice and the way he talks, is just very common, very calm, very collect, very like to the point. Like, but he but he explained something like that about what you just said like and his interview was Andre 3000 and Andre just felt like he's he and, and it was crazy because this is like I mean I, I guess anybody would feel hearing this from a major star like Andre 3000 and Andre 3000 was explaining that he missed what you just explained dark rooms. Right there, you mm-hmm. see the person's reaction. You can see their face, and then he was comparing it to like ACL festivals, Coachella. Like he goes, you lose personal where it's personal mm-hmm. anymore, and then it's not personal. And then he goes, I miss that. And yeah, because I, I he, think he, about it. Writer's block, you know. Why and, do you think live comedy <clears throat> is so good? But you I think know? you really have to understand and understand the feeling of people, and you have to feel. Of uh, a, a, a love of people Being in general, intimate like you, like yeah. I'm. Here, well, strangers, here. Yeah. strangers, we're pretty all much. in here together, and we strangers. all. Strangers, like, yeah. You want to laugh? Well, I'm gonna make you laugh. You know. Yeah, but but also you also think too. I mean, I, I I say this a lot too. I even say this sometimes at work. But I say, hey, nobody's holding a shotgun to say, hey, Monday night you're gonna go to fucking uh, Axel Red, okay? And then put the shotgun to their head, okay? All right, I'll go to Axel Red. You know, these people go to Axel Red. <laughs> Who told you what we did? <laughs> but I, my point is, like, these people are going there, and they're like, yo, man, I want to go there. You know, I want to go hear, you know, Joe. You know, I want to go hear that, you know, thing. Let me go see if he's there. Yeah. Right? Or, hey, did you hear that guy, Joe? You know, the next day, they're probably the water, you know, or uh, maybe there's a water station. Yeah, I mean, like I said, last Monday was, like, my best set, but that's because, like, I've been working and trying to change stuff and be... You know, awesome. different, and then, like, I I told so many jokes that I wrote a long time ago. Yeah, that I I told recently, and I was like, delivery. It was the delivery, yeah. for the most part. Delivery is very important. Yeah, you know. See, but see, that's that's you can per- tell a bad if you tell a bad joke well, it hits. Yeah. If you tell a good joke terribly, bombs. Yeah. But, it's, but see, that still goes into your personal experience, though, which is very, I think, very personal, and that's very cool that you recognize that. Because like, I feel like you notice the deliverance, and then you I notice know the flaws. reaction. I, that, 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 I'm yeah. telling you, I went back, and I was just like, what the fuck are my flaws? But but you said it be too before to me. You're like, it takes repetitive. You gotta go up, gotta go up, gotta go up. Can you go oh, trust going, me, I've been going, going out. Keep uh, going. Recently, I just... Hit it, hit it, but hit but it, then that's that's when I was telling you too though. I man, my hats I, off, my I hats had, off to you though because but, you're 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 there still fighting through. But, but I do take breaks. I'm taking yeah. a break right now, like yeah. either a week or two or whatever. But like, you got to be able to take breaks. Don't you don't have to do this forever. If you're not making any money off of it, if it's not paying bills, keep your day job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep your day job. Yeah. Like I am adamant about that. Do not do what I did and go homeless <laughs> yeah 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 well uh, we talked about that last podcast yeah I remember we talked about that we did. and that was on shitty audio now we have better audio way better yeah, audio well, so now told, we can actually get our t- thoughts out correctly <laughs> i mean hey what do you want to talk about let me know yeah 
Damn, you know what? This uh, cafe is making me uh, want to take a this cafecito bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Break. You want to go first, or I'll go. You want to go there, or you there? I'll go over there. Just sit over there. Just sit. Oh, an hour and eighteen minutes. If you want, we can end up another ten minutes, or I don't know. It depends. It really depends what you want. So, do. How long does this podcast usually go? Oh, it's open game. Oh, really? Yeah, it's open game. What's the longest you've ever recorded? Oh, three hours. That was my dad, though. My dad, which is actually get on my YouTube channel, he has given me the most views on my YouTube channel. I think it's like 130. It might be a little bit more now, but I doubt it. Probably just like one more, two more. But yeah, I, I can't. I can't do three hours. Oh no, we're not gonna I'm do three kidding. hours. <laughs> no, that's my dad. No, that's my dad. Yeah, my dad, which is most of thinking, my material, who is based around, is my dad. It too. I was like, do we yeah, have to yeah, work tomorrow? Yeah. No, 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 no. Most of my material is based around around my dad because my dad has that character to go three hours. Even from that episode, other shit I had to cut out of there. Uh-huh. Which, like, dealing with the whole everything, like, what's being said now, like, it's, yeah, totally different. Oh, you, you're good, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, whew. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so I was like, oh, I didn't know if you had another one left. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's a coffee thing that twists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bottle opener. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we have our own code. You know? <laughs> we have our own code, so it's all good. Actually, I, I did give you a coaster, but it's all good because this is oh yeah, probably your thing. So it's good. It's all good. So yeah, like I, obviously, if you were a uh, boxer. I would probably have the table double because if things were said that were not, I guess, you didn't agree with something, then, then at least I have two foots or, I guess, about six. Are you always getting in conversations with people where they start punching you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, I think about that too, though. <laughs> I've thought, I actually thought about Who's it. Who's trying to hit you, man? I don't know. I don't know why I think like that. <laughs> Sometimes I do think like that. I think like maybe somebody's gonna hit me, so maybe I just if I have more distance away from them. What do you say to people that makes you think know. this? Oh no! Well, it's that at work too. I mean, my job, my line of work, yeah, that kind of gives me like the little paranoia. Oh, well, random people, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I think it also has a lot to do with me being in the Navy as well, because it's just like paranoia. Like, I, like I, I, I was, I was a flight deck veteran on the flight deck but it just gave you that whole like if you hear a big sound like you just want to look behind you you want to look 100% behind you and see the jet land so, because then there was like this big cable that was like a huge cable so like sometimes those cables do break uh huh they do break and if they break they flip back but they flip back on the ground and they slide but a cable and your ankle uh huh yeah, you already know what's going to win, you know. You know that that cable, cable. is just going to sweep your ankle. <laughs> and then next you know, you know, yeah, no, oh dude, yeah. There's been stories where like cables have like swung so hard that they can like cut half of your body off. It, no. it like No, it happens. So that's why like that's why I said you already want to you want to like when you hear a plane landing, you turn back and it's just it's a different type of paranoia because then there's other marines I understand who are have where they have to have their guns like right here or somewhere. I mean, I, 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 I sleep close to, I sleep close to a, a gun, but my point is, is like, there's some guys that they have to have that shit on them a hundred percent, even over here when they come back or some, some veterans, they have to have that sense of protection or that just that sense of just, they're close to something to protect themselves. It's, and it's just that paranoia. Um, I mean, being, I have being that in too. A play. No, but it's just PTSD, which is a very common. Yeah. Like I always, I always explain that not veterans just have PTSD. Civilians have PTSD too. They witness shit that they should not have witnessed. They've seen things that they should not have seen, and then it's common. Mm-hmm. But they don't know it. They're like, oh wow, well, I'm not a veteran. It's like you don't have to be a veteran well, okay, to have PTSD. So I, I went through trauma, though. I went through a lot of like. Well, that's know, what I'm saying. Personal trauma. We, we, I think we went over that last time as well, right? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, uh, that's I do have PTSD from like growing up in the hood and 
uh, well, my parents' separation and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff happened because of me or around me, drugs as well. Like, yeah. Uh, I, it's not, and the drug thing is like just in the past five years. Like, yeah. when I started comedy is when I started, like, I've always smoked weed, right, to be quite honest. I started smoking weed when I was, like, 14. Right. So, like, I was not, it's always been a thing. But, like, the drinking, I, I, I'm actually proud of myself. I didn't start drinking until I was 21. Yeah. Like, I was just, like, I was that kind of kid. I was just, like, no, I got to do it by the book. I got to be a good kid. I got to be, like, hey, if legal. If it's legal, I'll do it. Yeah. But then... After that, I started doing, like, cocaine, and then started doing acid, mushrooms, you know, and just expanding myself, and I was just like, no, nah, shit. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, like, let go. I fucking dove deep. But, but, you, but you also have to understand, sometimes that's also, like, needed. The mind sometimes needs it. Like, what? Deterioration? No, 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 no. But I'm just saying, like, I'm sure. I'm kidding. I'm sure. No, but I'm saying, like, I'm sure you had some insight from those experiences. Uh huh. You know. Yeah, I mean, like, and then from those experiences, you had some insight. Here's here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. I I I say this on stage. It's like this is this bit that I say is just like the the premise is like drugs are fun but you don't know how they're gonna affect you yeah I say this because it's true drugs affect you always but in different ways true yeah. that's the thing weed does something to you you know everybody knows what weed does like you know makes you feel good you know some uh, indica makes you like calm you know indica's more chill sativa like perks you up a little bit you know, like people understand what this drug is for and why they're using it. And right. What they're trying to do differently with themselves. Cocaine. You right. want to be more fun. You want to be more energetic. You want to be the life of the party. You know, you want to talk about business deals that will never happen. Like it is what it is. Acid does expand your mind. So does mushrooms, you know, acid chemically, mushrooms organic. But. It's just, it, it is what it is. I, I think it's a little bit different game now, though. I think now it's like... In terms I, of what? I think, like, when you did them, it was... Um, it's of recent, in the past five years. No, I know, but I'm saying, like... Uh, but even that, even in the five years, it's gone drastically towards the fentanyl, like, the whole fentanyl, like, some, some Oh, pills. my God. I, look, I'm yeah. so glad I stopped doing cocaine. Yeah, because you just don't before know. Before all the fentanyl. Like, I think one day it might have happened to me. Yeah. Okay, so I was, like, hanging out with some friends, partying, whatever. Yeah. And I had some uh, some coke that I, like, uh, had in a bag in my closet, right? I was saving it for a minute because yeah. I, was, I was trying to quit. But then I was just like, nah, fuck that. I was like, you know what? Maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll go back to it, you know, right? So it was this night, and I do it. Then we go to another friend's house, and it's like, like you know, partying. And then I wake up the next day, and there's this huge knot in my arm, in my right arm. Yeah. And then this huge bump, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I grab uh, ice. I put it in a bag. I start, like, rubbing it. You know, it goes down. But, but I knew it was because of the cocaine. Wow. And I don't know if that was fentanyl. But after that, I was just like, yeah, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Now mm -hmm. it's like, I honestly truly believe, like, back in the day, it was more of a, people were just trying to get high, and that was it. Now I used it to, like, have fun. I used it to party, you know? Like, I just, that's what I, I used no, no, it but when I was trying to, Well, that know. was always the true basis, that's what I'm saying, like, back like early 60s, 70s. Well, like, you, you see it when you're a kid. You 80s. see it all the time. It's like, hey, we're partying. Oh, let's go to the bathroom. And, you know. Uh, well, but but I'm saying there you were, it, it was almost, I, I, I don't know, maybe it was almost then safe to use. I'm not, I mean, I'm being very general right now, but I'm saying like in a way, I would say back in the day, it was a little bit more general to be safe at doing that type of stuff. 
But nowadays, back then it was more pure. But nowadays, yeah, that's what it I'm saying. Now, now, nowadays it's a little Say bit. Say the truth. Well, nowadays it's more about money, more about yes. money. How much more I can get out? How much more I can get people more fucked up? Um, I mean, in my line of work, I see a lot of that shit, and then you could kind of point it out, and it's kind of sad because there is people who are going with with withdrawals, and the withdrawals are very bad, very bad. Like you For see alcohol? it. Alcohol. Just in, or just no, any withdrawals? No, well, I mean, because it, it, I know the. You I'm know, not a doctor. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a doctor or nurse, but I, I would just feel like me just. Seeing, I am. <laughs> doctor Joe Navarro here. <laughs> I'll tell you if this is true or not. Well, you see a lot of funny, uh, general reasons of why you're having pain. Uh huh. And if you see somebody who is generally like. Like, like you know, and, uh, and I mean, is that like pain inside that the pain that you like, it's almost like an itch, like an itch, like you got a fucking itch somewhere <laughs> or is it like a pain where it hurts? Because then it gets kind of where the perception of well, what pain do you have it? <laughs> is mm. there a need for some type of substance that you need? Because it's just like I said, it's my type of line of work. Yes. My line of work, I just view this Here's sometimes. The and then I'm just like, uh, are they true to what they're saying? Mm-hmm. Back pain? Is it really back pain? Is it not? Is it? No, 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 no. It's it's cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> not enough cheeseburgers or just less or, or too many cheeseburgers? Dude, I love. Or too many cheeseburgers. I love snorting cheeseburgers. <laughs> I used to. I used to love snorting cheeseburgers. It's just like, I didn't, I didn't think it was like, <sighs> the fentanyl thing like really scares you. It really does. Like, you know. No, it is crazy. It is crazy. It's, 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 uh, I mean, and then that's even more, that, that's even, a, even a question then too, because the question then is even more of, uh, like when, uh-huh. we, when we were, when we were younger and then we had older people say, Hey, be careful and just say no and. Don't do this and don't do that. Uh huh. And now maybe we're these people, but it's a different level, though. I feel it's a totally different level now. Like it's a uh-huh. it's a different. The level the level now is where it is. It is dangerous. It is where you don't really know what's out there and what. Ooh, excuse me. What people are putting in these pills and what they're you know because. Also, like I said, in some type of line of work that I've seen uh-huh. by, I, I've seen people who uh, are in deep pain because maybe they got in a car accident. You got some people who are uh, trying to feed a a a pain uh-huh. that they have, and the pain it might be from something that was not their fault. So they're now they're in pain, and then now they're drug seeking, and now they're out there doing. I mean, it's, seeking of of maybe hitting a corner, or they maybe they got a hookup for a good while, a month, two months. Yeah, I, I, I see. Up, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, I, I, it's like I almost sympathize because it's like, wow, I, I, I see, and it's sad. It's very sad because, like, they say that it's an epidemic, and the epidemic is is people who are. Here's your coffee, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, the the oh, whole. Damn, that's hot. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, oh. Throwback to like Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson used to do this. <sighs> I've watched a few of those episodes on YouTube. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> are are you saying he was overly caffeinated? Oh yeah, very. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, that dude was very overly. Yeah, yeah. Like no telling what the fuck he was like, because he had that. Like he like he go like that. He's like. <laughs> yeah, he would. Oh, yeah, yeah. and then he'd be like, yeah. He's like, yeah. So tell me about you know, it was just, like you could just. I, I don't know. I don't know. If that's just being over observant of myself, or just what I mean. But. <laughs> oh no! I mean, like I'm pretty sure he didn't really watch the show he just did it and then moved on to the next one so he couldn't see that tick that he had 
Yeah. Probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, when you watch yourself on tape and you see something happen, like you touch your nose too much or, you know, brush your hair, whatever, yeah. you're like, oh, I didn't know I did that. I should start, you know. Not do it so much. Not doing yeah. it so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But also, I mean, can you imagine having his. At the time, I would say 80s, 90s. He, I mean, he had it pretty good. I mean, I mean, what do you do? You just wake up. You live in California and drive down the street, pull in, park, go inside, mm-hmm. wardrobe. I'm guessing. I, mean, I haven't been through none of that, but wardrobe. Next, you know, whatever. They get uh-huh. you up, you know, get you up to date. Maybe you've already had up to date memo about what was going on in the show, who's going to be your guest. Maybe you're just going to say, fuck it, I'm going to go off, I'm just going to improv it. Or I'm yep. just going to go off, whatever. Yep, yep, yep. Or, okay, fuck it, I'll tell the jokes that they wrote. You know, like, it's just... And all you're doing is talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that that's funny, though. It's just like, that 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 happens, and this person doesn't give a shit about that as much, and they're just, like, being themselves. Yeah. You know, and just accepting it. And it was like, fuck, let me get a drink. <laughs> well, but, but I go back to him. I've watched him a few times just watch, and then obviously I feel who... Obviously, Howard Stern, obviously, he knew about Johnny Carson as well. I'm sure he gathered some tools I mean, from him yeah, or I some mean, things that he watched. Howard, John, Stern, Howard Stern's another guy that I, I but get here's my the thing about off Howard. To, he was really good at like grabbing your attention. Oh yeah. And it wasn't just radio. He hasn't made a movie too. You know, like he was just like, he positioned himself as like the more the raunchy radio host. Yeah. And like people got hooked and it was like, Oh, Oh, look at that movie. It's, Oh my God. What are they doing? Like, you know, are these women in bras and panties? Oh my god, what's happening? Like, it, like, you know what's going on? It's just like, well, what one bit I remember? It was almost like I feel like a bit just to get attention and also just to grab. He's really good. He's yeah, he's good he, at getting it was, people. It was, to it was like around listen. Selena's death. <gasps> yeah. What the fuck? And he mentioned a comment, and, and I I can't even paraphrase or I can't even really. I, I just know he. It was after she passed, and he made a comment, and I admit, I and from like I said, from I from what I remembered, it was dealing with her butt, and he made a comment or something, and then I guess there was a, at the time here in Houston, it was a radio station called Ka Kuku Ka, <laughs> and it was called, and it was actually K Q Q K, but they would say Ka Kuku Ka, you know, and it was. I think it was 106.5. <laughs> ka, cuckoo, ka. Yeah. Ka, cuckoo, ka. You know? And then... Ka, cuckoo, ka. The, the guy... Ka, ka. It was a guy, ka, ka. A, a VJ, or I, I guess it would be the DJ, Bo. Bo something. I don't even know his last name. And he called Howard Stern, and they had actually... I mean, this is 80s, 90s, early 90s, maybe. I guess when she just passed, maybe. So at the time, I guess technology was just... At that there was no podcast at the time, really, maybe not much internet. So they were talking on the radio back and forth, and they were like kind of taking shots at each other. Spanish radio. Well, Tijuana Ka was a known Tijano station here Tijano. in Houston, and they were like the main. The okay. they were like the main. They were like the main. Ka Ka Tijano at the rodeo, Houston rodeo, like. Back in the day when there was Tijano Day, it was truly Tijano Day. It was all bands from Texas that played from majority of the valley and then came up here and we played in the rodeo. And then Kakuku Kaba yeah, presented. After Selena died, Tijano kind of died down too. Well, not really. I mean, I mean, you had some that still hung in there. But I mean, it still goes back to the old school shit, though. I think old school is always going to. Look. look we- no, I mean, when, I mean, but there's no really true Tijano new music. Back in the day, like, you, you're you right. I, I would say, yeah, you are right. R.I.P. Selena, obviously. Yeah. Anything for Selena's. Yeah. But, like, I... She was amazing. Like, she, like she was one of... She also did a... Like, she had an amazing career. Well, it was just sad. Yeah, it's so crazy. The fucking the person that's the cl- one of the closest to you does that shit. Well, no, I I always still feel. Oh my god! I, I always feel 
Yolanda Salvador. Salvador. What is it? Salvador. Some shit like that, but it, I mean the 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 name Yolanda is just any any bitch name Yolanda. It's crazy. No, <laughs> no woman Yolanda is yes, crazy. Yes, Yolanda Saldivar. That's her name. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Oh no. <laughs> well, where is she from? Just just I'm just curious. Just curious. What re- what region of this world is she from? She grew up in San Antonio. Oh, did it say was she? She was born in San Antonio. Uh, descent? Does it say anything about descent? Huh? Where she descended from, maybe. Oh, she's Hispanic. Uh, oh, yeah. what, are you trying to fuck <laughs> We gotta get specific here. Okay. Because <laughs> I claim I'm... I'm uh, Let's see. I don't know if it says... I'm Hispanic, but yet my family, you know... Mexican. Mexican. That can go either which way on that as well. But yeah, whatever. Uh, It doesn't. Okay, we're going to have to go through the whole movie. (laughs) Don't worry about it. So, my my whole point to that was I feel certain regions of. Certain. No, I'm not going to go down that way. I'm not going to say. I'm not going down that alley. No, no, what I I was was going to say was that I I, I feel it would probably put a little. Pinpointing on where she was Latino from, right where, no, where she was from. <laughs> That's all I was saying. Nothing specific. All I was saying no, is that you know what? It's stuff. fine because we're Hispanic and we can be racist to our own people. <laughs> yeah, but then again, <laughs> oh well. I mean, then, then I don't like to fuel though. I don't like to fuel things. But I don't have to fuel it. You know, like you know, if, you, if, if the fire's already blazing, just let it yes, blaze. Yes, yes, yes. Let it burn out. I don't, like if I want to be that person that just goes, oh okay, and then let me take advantage of it, start just throwing more to it, more to it, just so I can get more likes or more. Trying to think positive, man. <laughs> trying to stay straight. <laughs> it's a fine line. I'm trying to stay straight. That's talking about something else, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need the Lord right now? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But I think we were going off of uh, styles of, like I said, when we first started. The would, podcast. Yeah. It was just styles, and then so yeah, like artists. you're talking about Chappelle, and then we went to the car. So Carlin, but but was, it's still related to styles. No, styles. no, Carlin's style was way different. Like Carlin, like they're both philosophers of their time, you know, Chappelle and Carlin. But Carlin would just had like when he first started out, he was he used to be like this clean cut, you know, comedian. But he was being himself. In a sense, he thought he was he himself. thought that was who he was. But maybe that was like kind of like how your deal is like you're coming up with your jokes, and then you're saying Every, like, everybody their voice changes, your yeah. voice changes all the time. Yeah. That was like I, I I'm beginning to realize that like when he was doing those TV shows yeah. back in the day, he was just like uh, being you know what he thought a, the idea of a comedian was, right? And then he got to it was like this isn't for me. Let me go find out what I really want to do. And it wasn't instant. I think it took him like two years to actually like, you know, work out the new jokes and the new style and figure out like what he wants to do from there. You know, what, what does he want to change? Did you watch that HBO documentary? I don't know if I did. I've, I've always I like did. followed his, you know, Oh, was it the one where he was sitting on the couch? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen it then. Yeah. 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 Uh, that is it. Yeah. It broke it down pretty well. Yeah. So like, I, I he was so brilliant and the way he could describe just everyday things, you know, just everyday things. The way he described them was like funny, just hilarious. It was so simple and you know, he was. I I feel like comedy, being, humor. I feel like humor is an intelligence. Yeah, no, it is. I feel like it. I feel like no. If, you you have to be observant. You're very observant. You're alert. Yeah. You're in the moment. You yeah. know. Always like trying to figure things out. Or like I see here, a stereo. You know, you know. Well, it's even uh, it's even fun to fuck with people too. That I love fucking with people. Let's uh, get that so. I don't know. I think it was that. Maybe it was the line. Okay. On your, on your, oh, let me right here. Uh, no, I do that to fuck with people too, though, as well. Like I fuck with people, as in like, uh. Yeah, I ignore people sometimes, but it's also just to ignore the fact that I don't oh. want to. I don't want. To, I'm, I'm ignoring you because uh, I just. Yeah. I don't know. What is? 
is it? I'm ignoring people to avoid confrontation. I'm avoiding. I'm annoying. I'm. I'm avoiding people to. Uh... Yeah, that's on your line. It's my line. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. Is it my earphones or? I don't know. The mic. It's all good now. It's safe, huh? It was just like a ghost that came through or something. Because it's still <laughs> finishing up the Day of the Dead. Dia de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos. Oh, yeah. So we can do a no, well, Dia de los Metros? Yeah. Day of the Dead. Big oh, Dia yeah, de los Muertos. Yeah. Okay. I guess this whole like conversation we've been having is just a general about artists in general. Our conversation where we went from talking about, you know. Uh, the movies and then you know when I when we had that conversation about that well, movie okay, Spanking so, My Monkey and all that shit that like what 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 stood out for me was David O. Russell which went on to make Three Kings he went on to make The Fighter He, I mean he's the most dominant or I guess biggest director in right now or would, they would probably just call him and say, hey, we need you to direct this movie. I mean, and then me, when I was young, seeing this movie called Spank My Monkey, and then ended up, that was just one of the first indie movies, which was very weird. And like I said, like, maybe just feel ugh, nasty, you know? Yeah. But I'm just being relative as in general, what we've been talking about, like artists in general, like artists in general, just have your styles and you got to stick to your styles, which I feel George Carlin, and that was the story I was being relative about, which that, when George Carlin told Carrot Top, stick to your shit, you know? Like, don't give a fuck what they think, you know? Because mm-hmm. Carrot Top was kind of doubting himself and he was venting. It. And George Carlin explained to him, don't doubt yourself, just fuck them, you know? Go out there and just still do what you do. Who gives a fuck? Fuck them, fuck them. Yeah. You know, and then Carrot Top, like, felt that that was, like, kind of a, like, a blessing. Like, George Carlin put his hand over his head, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, like, it's like, okay, I can do my he goes, my props. If this motherfucker's telling me to fucking be myself and just continue doing what I'm doing, fuck it, I'm gonna just and, do what I'm fucking and doing. he was right. Yeah, it's crazy, and, man. In his own way, I'm pr- I'm pretty sure, like, Carrot Top became famous. I'm pretty sure he's made a lot of money. Yeah. Like, I remember him when I was a kid, you know, like, it, he was big, so, like, he did it his way. But but I also feel that it takes a lot of uh, character to to understand of. Uh, I mean, people think about Eddie Murphy. It's people a lot think of about... acceptance. Okay, so here, here's one of the reasons why I feel like I am becoming better at comedy. I'm understanding myself more. Going back to like I took some time off or whatever, and I went through the apathy phase. You know, right. yeah, you're I'm at acceptance now. Thank right. you. I just accepted it. You know. Accepted everything for what it was. But I feel like the thing that makes me like. God damn it, I just lost that thought. What was it saying? Sorry. Well, you were saying about being accepted. And then, like, you know, but, but you're also saying, like, just like doing what you're doing. Oh, I just started accepting everything for what it was, right? Yeah. So I started trying to accept myself, accept my flaws. Right. You know, accepting accepting that I maybe I can't fix everything, but the stuff that I can fix, like let's let's see how easy it is to fix. Oh, excuse me. You know? Right. And I apologize to the listeners. I am <laughs> overly caffeinated right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, man, he just said something very moving. And then yeah. I was like, whoop, whoop, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Excuse oh, me. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. but you were like, yeah, like you were saying. No, was, uh, but uh, no, no. It's, it's hard to accept that you're flawed. Yeah. It, it, it's always hard to accept that. And, like, it, it took me years to accept all, like, a lot of my flaws. Not all of them. I still, like, still got a couple I don't like, but for the most part, I accept myself as I am. And I should. Of course. I feel like a lot of people don't do that. Of course. I agree. 
I feel like a lot of people are just like going through the world just being like, okay, I have to be this idea of a person. You know, I grew up with these values, so I have to attain this, you know? Yeah. And that's societal pressure. That's family, you know, pressure from your family. And that could be like, you know, internal pressure, whatever it is. But like being able to fight that is very, very hard for a lot of people. You know? Yeah. And I get that. I am being an idiot trying to do stand-up comedy, but I love it. Eh. Oh, and be broke at the same time. Eh. Trying to do stand-up and be broke. Yeah. You know? It, it It's tough. I, I, I've... I, you gotta have a job. You gotta have a job. You gotta you gotta make money. I uh, I've been homeless before and it fucking sucks. Yeah, but I I would say the root of success is, and I'm being very very. Uh, keep your mouth shut. Do what you're doing. Keep your composure, and and then that that's almost like it's almost like there's times, and I'm not saying that if 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 help is being helped to you, that's badass because that I think everybody needs help. But I, I feel like when somebody can keep their composure on daily activities, but then on the other side, their life is pretty fucked up. And I I, I can even go back to my navy. People that are getting by. Well, no, no, no. Well, well. Like I said, this is a this is another. Uh, I think I've brought this up a few times in the podcast, and, and just going back is that I'll never forget this fucking Navy petty officer telling me, "You can be all fucked up inside and be jacked up, but make sure your uniform is correct. Make sure your gig line is good. Make sure you look presentable. Make sure you're clean cut. Make sure you're presentable." Because he was explaining about perception, perceive the fact of representing your country, and I hate to go off a little bit on this tangent, but I mean, but 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 oh, what go, I but, go ahead. but no no but what but no but what I got from him is like almost like it's a struggle to do what you want to do, and be happy, but at the same time, you know, people don't want to, and, and I'm sure people have seen it, you know, like you know, it's a common saying, like people don't want to hear your sad story or nothing, but then at the same time, I hate. People <clears throat> that trauma dump. Okay. And like, I, it's, well, hate's, no, no. A, hate's a strong word. I, I dislike people who trauma dump. No, 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 but you could trauma dump on certain people. I think, I feel, and, I feel, I feel it's in good certain though. certain situations. True. Now, I'm talking about the ones. But that's, I feel it's normal to, to, to have to do that sometimes. It's, no, no, no. When, when I mean trauma dump, I mean you're in a situation where it's a stranger, you've never met this person before, and you're talking to them, and one thing leads to another, then you start talking about yourself, and you start turning it more, then you tell your sets, you know, the thing that happened to you when you were younger or whatever, but you're not understanding how you're making the other person feel, and you just keep, like, telling them about you and all these problems and stuff. That's a no-no. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, well, I feel, I've been there, and I feel a lot of people have been there. Oh, you've trauma done before? Yeah, I think I've, I've been there, like where you just catch uh, a point where, yeah, maybe you have, I, I've never been there a point where I have nobody to talk to in a way, so then this person just happens to be there, and then the, you know, it's like, like you're just, like you I, just, like you, wrong. like, like, no, like you just said, like there's this conversation, no, 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 no. normal I, I, conversation. I will then, always say, th- also through, say this too, I will also say this, I have done it before as well. Yeah. And... The reason why I had to stop doing it is I feel like I started to become self-aware and more empathetic with how other people were feeling because I, I think it's funny when you make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. But I'm beginning to realize, like, I like to have fun all the time. I'm always joking. Like, hey, what's that? You know, ever since I was a kid, I would always joke, 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 joke all the time. I would never take anything serious, you know? And even now today, like, I'm still not taking shit serious. I'm just living my life. But that's what it takes, though. And that's why I said that's why I go, it kind of sticks out. No, 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 but it it helps. It helps because, like, 
there's there is bullshit. There's you know there's you need <laughs> money. You need a job. You need you know the basics. You need food. You need there's that other side of the person. But 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 I feel that fuels the whole. One, yes. That, that, once you it fuels the well. Other side. Once you fix your basic needs, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you're free to do whatever the hell else you want. Yeah. Like you said, you didn't put this table up in four days straight. Yeah. Take you a whole month, yeah. four weeks. Yeah. So like, you're doing it the smart way. Yeah. You know, I wish when I was younger, I was just like. Oh no! I should probably hold down a job for a long time and like see just 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 in case. Hmm. I fucking I'm living life on hard mode right now. Yeah. And I feel like I'm doing it because like I because of the apathy I'm trying to change my mindset. I'm trying to get back into survival mode. Yeah. You know. Because, like, I, I remember when I was, like, homeless, I was, like, in survival mode. I was, like, fuck it, I just need money. Fuck everything else. Let me just go fucking just just get some food right now. Let me see. Okay, I can't eat for a couple of days. Fuck it, let's do it. I was in the best shape of my life huh. when I was homeless Yeah. as a reason. I was, like, you want to lose weight? Lose all your money. Yeah. That's how that works. It yeah. was just... And it was like, those those were like the best times though. Because when you hit rock bottom, you're like, oh fuck, there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. Dude, I fucking had so much fun during that time. Yeah. Like I, but. What type of fun? Though? Uh, fucking doing coke. Yeah. Uh, acid, mushrooms, uh, Xanax, Klonopin. Like I was just going off. Yeah. And it's my fault. It's my fault that it happened. And I'm beginning to realize that I, I've come to accept I'm an addict. Hmm. You know? And it's not just the drugs. It's also food. You know? It's also like... I, I don't know how much I spent on Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that shit, <laughs> man. God damn. $30 for every fucking... No, fuck that, man. That's fucking bullshit. What did you get to eat? You live in America. I know, but That's like... beauty about yeah. America. That's that's, that's the new thing now. After COVID, after COVID, and everybody's like, "No, we're gonna get home. It's just, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great." And it's like, "No, you're gonna gain thirty to forty pounds. That's what's gonna happen, man." It's just oof. But it's America, though, <laughs> where you can gain thirty to forty pounds and still be considered hot. <laughs> maybe 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 while out, and then the next two days, just go maybe walk around the block and then run. I don't know, work it off. At least you balance it off. Moderation. That's the, moderation. That's the thing. Like I, moderation. I like, I I like moderation. I've been. That's the reason why I've been so much better with my drinking and smoking as of, as of recently. It's like yeah. I, I don't do it that much anymore. Which is which, which is why T- I, tonight this is like the, the last, yeah, this yeah. is the call off, right? It's every once in a while, you know. No, but I think that's good though. Um, I feel like me if I just slow down just drinking beer, I get bloated when I drink. Well, I'm a sorry, lot of beer. drinking coffee, guys. Drinking coffee. <laughs> and when I when I when I drink coffee, I get a little <laughs> bloated, and and yeah, I get a little bloated. But I, I mean, but it's a comfort thing, you know. It's just like beer. It's a safe thing. In the Navy, it was a lot of tequila. It was a lot of uh, a lot of oh, uh, in Dubai. It was the wormwood abscess. Yeah, that was a weird one. It's a liqueur. It's like a green liqueur, and the green liqueur is. I think I've heard of this. It's a green liqueur is a wormwood, which I don't even know what a wormwood is really. I just know it sounds cool, and then maybe it just sounds interesting. But obviously, it comes from drained. the name. It comes drained from something called a wormwood, and this wormwood is. A liqueur, which is relative to almost like a Jägermeister in a sense. And it gives you not a really of a drunk high. It gives you more of a... Well, no, it, it's, it's still a, a, a very relative, like... like you're, you're, Yeah, you just feel the alcohol, but it's like a burn. But what's really weird about it is the fact that you can actually pour this liquor on the bar and then light 
light it up and it burns. <laughs> so it's actually flammable. And then you're actually taking a shot of this. Wow. And it's called Absith. Absith. Uh, there's Warm a place. That, Wormwood. But there's a place actually in New Orleans that I would love to go to. And I don't know if it's still there. It's called Green Ferry. And Green Ferry, which is the most common place there that you can go and do that in New Orleans. Because then it, it goes back to some other shit where a lot of writers were known to do this liqueur called Absith. But then apparently they would mix it in with other substances as well. And who knows what substances those were. But yeah, you're double dipping. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they're very interesting. So I yeah. Mean, like, it's like, if we're talking like double dip, like being <clears throat> drunk and high is fun. Like, like I understand it. I right. understand why people do it. Yeah. But you can't do it all the time. Well, yeah, that's what I say. It's like, you know, I mean, people in moderation. I mean, like, you, and then you have, then the other question goes too, you know, other artists, are, a lot of artists do very well when they're high. A lot of artists do very well when they are under certain in a different mind. Okay, so that's a good point. That's a good point. Like, I do write. Because then that's, they're comfortable, that's when they're comfortable. You Sometimes know, they're comfortable. when I'm, <sighs> As of recent, like, when I write jokes sober, when I write jokes high, when I write jokes drunk, when I write jokes drunk and high, like, yeah. there is a certain piece of me that knows, oh, I'm using, I'm abusing this for inspiration. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 like, seriously, yeah. I'm abusing this, like, we're talking about weed, for instance. I'm, I abuse it for inspiration, because, like, it does help, but it, it doesn't just help my, like me, my sense of humor. Right. It helps my anxiety. You know, it helps like just calming me down. But, but maybe also with, with that, it's like your thoughts are racing so much that you want to be certain. Well, that's how thinking. I am all the time. I feel like I have, I, I, I'm not tested, but I feel like I have ADHD because like. No, most comics do. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I got tested. I, I got tested real late. I, I'm not scared to even say yeah. it now. So I, I, I I'm at the point. That where, that's why we're going back to the table. I am so jealous of you because I don't have the attention span to put in, you know, the time to make this. But, but, but at the same time, I have a lot of restrictions on this end. Mm. Which, 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 like I, my, my. I, I really want to base a lot of my bits on my father because it's very, very uncommon and very almost where you dive in and the thought process behind why my father is the way he is is very, very questionable but mysterious in a way, which you will never find the answers why, uh -huh. which is just his actions, which back to the table is the fact that I had even threw the idea about this and he wasn't down about it. <laughs> really? Because he had other ideas for this door. This was originally a door. So then, mm -hmm. and then going back to, like I said, a lot of, like I try to like use some of situation I've had with my father and, and, and like, and, and, and a lot of other comics, you know, they've, they've used their fathers as, you know, almost punchlines in a way, I guess you can say. Or if not that material to base off, but but I feel okay. my if we're talking about fathers, the thing that trust me about my dad is he's very sensitive. He's a very sensitive man, but he's like he's old school Mexican. See, and that's that's common as well, I, and I can relate to that as well. You know. Yeah, uh, uh, don't get me wrong. He's a great dad. Uh, he always provided for us, just like my mom, like when she could. But like, it was it. I don't know what the hell. I had an old dad, older father. Yeah. Like my, my, I had an older father and I like younger woman, Woody Allen. Oh my God. <laughs> nah, but. Uh oh, uh, no, keep going. No, but my, my dad was like in his late, early to late thirties. And then my mom was like 17 at the time. It was like, old school Mexicans, you know? Yeah. And like like my dad was just like he met her and I was just like, ah, got together, made me. 
But he always taught me like these old school ways. It's like, you got to be a gentleman, you know, you got to open the door for the lady, you know, and stuff like that. And, but there was a division between me being a millennial and my dad being, I, I don't know, boomer, maybe, I don't know, Gen X. Probably Gen X. Well, my mom's Gen X. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Would you? No, my dad. Oh, your dad? Yeah, he was born in uh, 59. Probably baby boomer. He was a boomer. Okay, I got a boomer dad. Yeah. You know, and I'm a millennial. And I have the Gen X mom. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, I got, you know, so growing up, like, my, I, I could see the difference between the music, because my dad always used to play, like, you know, mariachi music and, like, uh, he would play some Tejano sometimes, but it was Hispanic music for the most part, you know? Yeah. And, or, mu- or music in Spanish, I'll say. Right, right. There was a lot of music in Spanish. And I grew up loving that. My mom, I uh, from what I remember, the music she was listening to, she was listening, sometimes she would listen to, like, the popular music. And that got me thinking, too, because, like, women know good music. Yeah. You know? From the women that I've I've met and and talked to and and been with, like women know what's what's what music sounds good, and I feel like that that's why like a lot of guys try to like you know play that type of music. It's like oh, this is gonna get all the girls and stuff like that. It's true. <laughs> that's why the well, like, it's a lot of nineties R and B. That's what all music is about. Is about getting this other person. Like even music is like, are you losing somebody? Or, like, you miss somebody, or you broke their heart, or you cheated on them, they cheated... Like, it's all the same stories, just over and over again, just in a different way, you know? But, 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 but I think that... And then I, I feel I'm bringing it all, like, down to the middle of what we've been talking about in general. It's just, like, um, artists... Well, that's uh, not every styles. Song, no, 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 but I'm saying artists, styles, in general, it's, it's all... Based on you know experiences that you've had, and you're bringing this in your view on how do you want okay. to express it. So, like, if you're a singer, you're going to express it through singing. If you're a poet, you're going to express it through being poetry. If you're a comedian, excuse me, you're going to express it by telling jokes and then just kind of being relative. Well, I'm going to speak just for myself right now. When I'm telling jokes or on stage or anything, I'm just trying to be funny. At the end of the day, sure, I have trauma. Sure, I have these things that happened in my past. But I'm trying to get past. You know? But, but I think that I feel what you do it helps. It, it, a little bit, but I don't I don't want people to think of me as, oh, my God, he's sad and mad. Like, he's so sad or this or that. No, I want them to think nah. of me as happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? Because I, I, I've been the person who they're like, oh, shit, Joe's around. Fuck, he's going to bring everything down. Fuck this. I hate that. Fuck that. I want to be fun. I can be fun. I can be myself. No, but you're I can't. Always, every, no dude. But every every time I've met, I've, every time I've talked to you, even back in the day when I first met you, you've always been, uh, inter, like just willing to talk and shoot the shit and have a few laughs. <laughs> I try to be that way, but like, don't get me wrong. I, like, even I get bored of just being on you know upstairs or in a, pat, a patio or whatever and people are just shooting the shit talking about the same thing over and over and over again <laughs> she gets so boring it's like do you have a life really <laughs> nah but I, but i think those moments too can also be kind of a, a moment too to be like that's a moment for you for you to figure out. Okay, yeah. This person? Well, no, that's not, no, no. But I, but I, I, I could catch those. I could catch those where I'm just like, like you kind of look around. Well, but that's, then, that's but then also know. you can be like, that's the questionable part right there for yourself. Be like, man, I'm pretty content with this. You know, this is cool. Well, that's when you know you've been at <laughs> a place too long. No, you're. I, but like, I, I, like, I explained to you last time. I told you though. I go, man, you're still fighting through. You're, you're, you're a fighter, man. You're, you're still, you're, you're there. <laughs> you're there and that's very common that's uh, that's not very common i'm sorry that's oh, not yeah. very oh common. yeah it's very common to fight people yes <laughs> yes oh <laughs> see there's a there's a space it's for see? a reason it's uh, a big heavy table see? ah god damn yeah. it it works yeah it, it works happen. self-defense table. Uh, well no that's that's probably like maybe that's gonna happen maybe like i don't think that would ever happen it could happen though what's this podcast called TST podcast. Or All right. Tristan's Shop Talk. 
for TST podcast. What's the What's the email for it? Uh, Tristan's contracting at yahoo dot com. Okay, if you want a self defense table, <laughs> email them. <laughs> Tristan's contracting at yahoo dot com. Yeah, that's T R I S T A N S. He uses a C O N T R A C T I N G at yahoo dot com. You know, I got to take a little break again, but right. you, you could probably just wait here, right? It'd be cool. Right? Is it a pee break? Yeah. All right, I'll take one too. All right, yeah. Yeah. And we are back. A little restroom break. Oh, one more. Restroom break. And you had to take, you know. <sighs> this coffee is bubbling up on me. <laughs> yeah, it bubbled up on me as well. But from what we were saying earlier, it was just how artists need to do what artists need to do. And I say that as in expressing your view from the world view from everything and i think no but i mean here's the thing but if you i feel if you realize that early enough that you can go far with that in anything what where (laughs) some coffee grounds just hit i don't know why uh but but the thing is uh what what you need to realize is we're all trying to make money. As, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's about earning a living. It's about doing this, whatever you're doing consistently to the point where it's making enough money to sustain you. True. And and I can say that that a lot of people still don't know what they want to do. To make them happy. And I feel people who do things that make them personally happy or they're... Or I I feel like... I I could definitely say just because I've gotten paid to do stand-up and I I do a weekly show and I go to mics and all that. Like, I still don't get paid enough to pay my bills i have paid my bills with money from comedy yeah have i yes i have before but i as of right now i can't sustain myself through comedy so i i i know the struggle but to 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 stay in there and just keep doing it every week no matter what it it, it's it's hard it's hard man i get it because i do it all the time there's been a couple times where i wanted to quit yeah of, of course i've wanted to quit many times but I, I can relate to what you're saying as in, like, when it came to me being in the military, like, boot camp. Uh-huh. It's almost relative. But see, things like, like, when you're joining the military, they have to compress certain stresses all in, and, and kind of almost, like, set you up in a, in a failure type of way to see if you're going to fail or if you can't even just handle basic being yelled at being told to go clean this whole floor or mop, whatever. And then if you can't do that, then they're like, oh, man, this guy can't make it, you know? And then, yet again, they still might let the guy still pass through, or female, and then she still might get far, but 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 my point point is, it's almost relative. Like, you're you're, you're pushing through, you're you're handling, you're maintaining. To make your point, I was already put in a bad situation okay. from the start. Okay, so you, you've been there before. Yeah. So you know, you know, you know your your low point. We've you know your been mid-point. through the same type of yeah. thing, yeah. just in different ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but but yeah. I, but I'm saying it's almost like, but that's why I feel I feel, even you know these last few weeks, you know, in my mind as well, like people. Yet just separate themselves and they kind of put them in a, they put themselves in a selfish place to where this place where they're being very selfish. They think they're the only ones having these feelings or they're the only ones having these problems or they're the only one that, and it's like, yo, man, there's other people doing 
not let less worse problems or hey you have a job or hey you're taking care of this or hey you have a place to go lay your head or hey basic necessities and then people get all fucked up you know and and i just say it i hate to fucking say it it's typically it is pretty uh, americans that are very somewhat selfish in a way some some americans not all though not all i'm just saying in general where i feel some people would just have to check themselves and be like, well, man, the, I'm, the I'm gonna keep, keep, keep fighting. I can keep, yeah, yeah, right. Is selfish. right, 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 right. You right. know, and that that is very. How true. can I succeed? You know, how can I make all this money? Mm-hmm. Is this, it, it, it is what it is. How can I buy these things? You know, right. Everybody's thinking about themselves here, and I like I understand it. I get it. You know, because I, I grew up. My parents are from Mexico, right? Yeah. So they grew up more with a like a family sense yeah. you know and when they came over here they got you know separated they're once there's one spot the others got the other spot but i could see the difference between our family and like other people's family yeah you know and i just accepted it i was just like, oh this is not a regular family but i think it brings out character though in a person sometimes because i feel like when it's it, okay it changes you into something you didn't think you it depends but you can dabble in both sides though it depends you, 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 there's like you you once you fall and you realize oh, okay i was already put at a disadvantage yeah, yeah. C- coming to terms to that but but that but that's that, but that's early maturity that's almost like early maturity to like even have to like come across that thought i feel that's kind of like a it's almost like a fucking sock in the stomach you're like oh Damn, I am. This, I this, wish this ain't normal. <laughs> I wish I would have learned that when I was younger, though. Eh, but no, but but I mean, but you can still reflect, and then the reflecting can still go back to be like, yeah, oh shit. Damn. Most of the damage has been done already. <laughs> and I'm I'm not laughing you know at the fact I mean? whether the damage that was done. I'm just laughing at the fact that to realize, like, yo, man, <laughs> if, I, if I had to choose <laughs> to change lives of somebody, I do it in a second, bro. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm, I'm taking your house, dog. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Fuck that! Yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. I gotta live with the life that I got. Yeah. You know, I can't do anything else about it. I just gotta accept it for what it is and just move on. Yeah, but I mean, that, and that's why I base a lot of my shit on too, though, is the fact that you have to go through dark times to understand the good times. You know, I mean, you just gotta. Because I feel like if. It's just like if if somebody's raised and they don't have to work for anything or they don't have to realize that time when it was really shitty or you're really feeling fucking shitty, Mm -hmm. then there's no reference. All you reference to is good things because you've always been in a good fucking place. What are you going to reference to? You're going to keep referencing that like, oh, yeah, like I remember when I couldn't. Oh, no, I did always eat. Or I couldn't. Or I'm a man. I remember when I couldn't. Lay my head. No, I've always had a bed. I've always had this, you know? So I'm saying you have to, like, be able when to... When you're comfortable. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's when you lose. True. You have to put yourself in stressful situations, different situations, you know? You have to, multiple situations where you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Because that's how and you And that's learn. almost like being on stage. That's how you learn. That's how you yeah. grow. Well, what do you think a new joke is? Me, yeah. th- I hate... Yeah. I hate... Oh, here's the thing. I either hate or love throwing out a new joke, okay? The, I love the feeling of just, like, saying it the first time and it hitting hard, and I'm just like, fuck yeah, I, I yeah. just wrote that, and it's really great. But I hate bombing. You know, yeah. I hate when it doesn't work, and I'm just, like, telling it, and just like, what could I have done different, you know? They're like, well, what, uh, what was he mean? Yeah, they were like, <laughs> buttery nipples? What the fuck? <laughs> You know, and it's just like it just it just gets you to realize. But there's but there's a beauty in that. Like no, no, I no, no, said, no. there's a but, beauty in that though. But I have grown to love. Well, I've I've, I've bombed all the fucking time. I'm not I'm not scared <laughs> of bombing. Okay, <laughs> if you if you ever seen me, then you know I'm not scared but, but, of bombing. But I think it's fun to talk about it away because yeah. you can you can. I mean, because people will be like, oh man. But here's the thing. That's I how never I do that. That's I never go up there. How like, I it's like that's. That's how I, as a person, learn by yeah. failing a lot and trying to figure things out, change things, and whatever. Yeah. Now, my biggest problem was always that I was a stubborn asshole and I wouldn't drop jokes, right? Yeah. 
I'm learning now to drop the bad ones. You know, you kill, it's hard to kill your babies. Yeah. It's like you you wrote this, you love this, you think, oh no, this is good. Blah, blah, blah. But then you have to be self aware. That's the biggest thing about being a stand up comedian. You have to be self aware. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it's a big big plus. How you make people feel, you know, what you're saying, how you're saying it, just everything about you. But like. Somebody's trying to stop us right now. <laughs> we are that's going a, at two Home hours Depot. and 22 minutes. Two, two, two. Does that mean something? Yeah, two, it's two, Home two, Depot two. trying to stop us again. <laughs> um, no, nah, but I... I I, uh, I, I kind of stopped saying I, I, I. My point was Selfish saying... Selfish American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being... Being self-aware, being present, being in the moment. Uh, you know, that's the one thing that I realized. It's just like... But it takes time, though. Because like I said, I, I, I definitely feel comfortable now. I definitely... Like I, I everything, it is hard to do. But you're right. It's about repetition. It does take time to to get better at it. Yeah, it's something you got to work on. But even it. even when you saw me the other night, I was up there on stage for three minutes, and Marlo came up. He was like, you know, he flashed the light. I was like, oh, bro, okay, fuck Will Smith. All right, later, I'm out, you know? I just felt comfortable just going up there. I had a couple over here, and then I had a guy straight ahead. Remember I explained to you, which was in a pink dress with glasses, and looked like he was some type of maybe eight to five guy that went and checked in downtown, but that night wore a pink dress, and he was oddly sitting. specific. No, because the pink dress very well stood out because he got up and then the lights were in my face. And, you know, and I guess it had been a minute since I've been up there, but I I might have not had the microphone close. Uh, I had it maybe a little, maybe where I should have had it, maybe not. But just the fact of going up there, oh, it was just, it, it just felt just, I mean, there was only four people and the rest were all the comics that were there that went up there earlier before that, you know. Uh, and then, but I I just like the fact that I just got that okay, out of my system. Tell me your experience of like doing it now. Like how how do you view yourself in this? You know, in comedy and stand up. If, if if maybe I was on a Monday night or something like that, I can view faces and kind of just see, and then like you said, go with that that like just hit off. And not have anything just planned out, but maybe have some things brainstorming in my head that if I have to say this or say that or or just kind of mix it up. I got booed off when I DJed in the Navy. I got booed off playing music of old school kind of my I was I was kind of older. So I played uh -huh. music in front of this crowd. They booed me off as I walked down through the crowd. There was an older guy that I kind of thought maybe was kind of my age. Hey, man, that shit was badass. I liked your mix. And then, you know, there's one guy out of the whole group, which everybody else is booing me. That's your fan base <laughs> right there, man. But yet again, it really didn't bother me at the time, even though there was somebody, you know, a few people kind no, of no, take no, no, shots. No. What you just said explains it all. It's not about you getting everybody. It's about getting that one person and keeping them like that's I, that's I, how fan base but I, start. but I still never forget that one moment because yeah. it was just like almost if it was a skit or something like I wish I could just like if I had a big production team I would like you know take me back to the ship take me back to yeah. <laughs> have almost a guy that looked relative to him put uniform like just to catch, capture that moment of what I saw in my head and it was me walking down and these guys were like, I mean, they were literally like, boo. And this is playing music, though, which I feel is very relative to going up and saying things <laughs> oh, on a microphone. Say, can you see? <laughs> and, 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 and have in mind also, there's no alcohol involved on this ship. So there's no alcohol there. These are people who just want to listen to music because we had, and I can't go back to what the reason was, but I was able to DJ and play music. It was kind of like a, uh, like a free day, it was like most of the time it was always like Fridays, because in Afghanistan it was like their holy day, so like Fridays was our kind of free day. So we had these days off, so it would be like music in the in the big you know bay down below the ship, 
and everybody would walk through and hang out. And when I got to play, I got to play for a smaller crowd, not a very diverse crowd. I felt I was always more diverse and not very generalized to one crowd. Turns out that day I hit a generalized crowd, which was like so happened. I, I hate to even say like, radicals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. well, it was almost like little or like little John and repeat. If I played little John and repeat, they would have been cool with that. Uh, or maybe if I played Migos and repeat, they would have been cool with that. R.I.P. Take off. And then yeah, right, yeah, recipes. Um, so then that. Like, like, but it hit me. And then, like I said, like, it just, I don't know. I guess I suck. I walked down, fucking head down. And like, hey, man, like, that shit was good, man. That shit was, I, I like that mix. I was like, you know, everybody's kind of getting crowd. Like, oh, well, man, shit, you know, at least he stood out, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at least somebody liked my shit. Fuck it, you know, I can all walk off. I mean, I did but, play Run DMC. I played also, some, you know. But I mean, also, like, not everybody in your fan base is probably cool. Like, <laughs> you know, there's always that one creepy person. It's just like, dog, I got this person right now. They fucking like every one of my Instagram stories. Like, every fucking one I post. Heart, 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 heart. I'm like, no, I cannot. No, I cannot talk to this person anymore. I was just like, I'm done. Uh, it's a real person, too. Oh, my God. But I feel you need to see things like that, like to you, you need to see things like that to realize, like, hey, I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. And I go back to the same story too, Carlos Santana. I mean, he's 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 still he's still alive. Oh, I thought you knocked out. I was yeah, like, no, oh, no, did no, he no, die? No, no, no. But he's oh, been getting sick lately. Though. He's been he's been getting sick lately, and with him getting sick lately, he's. He's an older man, I get it. Man. Well, right, yeah, he's in his se- mid seventies, late seventies. How old is Carlos Santana? So, he always said a thing too. Even if he did not make it big, he would still be playing the guitar at some bar, some place, yet another, still playing. Seventy five. That's too old, but he's. I mean, but I don't know. Oh, but my my dad's older than him. My dad's more healthier than him, and then he's already like you know. But maybe it's all the. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's everything going on or just him getting older. Yeah, I mean... But but, but my point was that yeah. he always said that whether he was going to be whatever age, whatever, he was always going to be playing the guitar and singing because that's what he enjoyed and that's what made him happy. Well, I mean, I play the guitar, but, like, I don't have the same focus as Santana. I'm going to be honest, you know? No, but maybe that's your downtime. Maybe that's your thing. That you I, do I fuck to around every once in a while. Yeah, maybe that's like, your downtime. Just, but that's cool, I, though. It's my hobby aside from comedy. You know, music, playing guitar and, and listening to music, also movies as well. Uh, I, lately, I've been trying to figure out who the hell I am because for the longest time, and I'm yeah. being completely honest, I had no opinion on anything whatsoever. Like, no actual opinion. I would either have to lie to people saying, like, oh, just to be people please, just to be a people pleaser, just go with whatever the whole room was going with. Or I would try to be neutral. But then when I would try to be neutral, they would be like, oh, I guess this guy's going to be a politician one day. You know, like, there would always be that joke. So I was just like, recently, I just started to accept how do I really feel about certain things? Right. You know, how do I really feel? And that's a hard thing to accept. Because I, like I said before, my dad's old school. I grew up with some old school mentalities. And I'm, I'm, I can accept that. And I'm, I'm, it's not bad. You no, know? it's not. I like to open the door for a woman, you know. I like doing that. I like taking like women out to dates out. I do want to pay for everything. But nowadays, you know, it's a new day and age. And you have to change with the times. Yeah. So nowadays, like, you pay half. You know? Yeah. You may have, and they're like, or uh, I was talking to Enrique uh, about this. We were like, oh, you could like just pay and suggest her to pay the next time. So that way you know there's going to be another date. So that's smart. Mm. No? Mm. What do you think? You always What's your pay. move? You always got to pay. Always got to pay. 100%. If not more. And if she wants to hang out more, you got to pay. All right. All right. You're but full of they, toxicity like me. Cool. Bet. Yeah. <laughs> no. But then it can go, it can go, it can be divided on that end too, though. 
I mean, it's, it just depends for me. It's but like, but me, Th- there's also people. But me, but well, me, and then I'm very strong about this bullshit here. Uh huh. Me being proud of being a man and a male, and then other guys, I would just suggest to any other guy. Yeah, man. Like you got to pay for everything. You have to pay for everything. I always like try to, you know, even because I when if a woman. It's like no 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 no. I'll pay. Don't. Oh, I got this. I got this. Would you be? Not at all. Throw that shit to the side. I got. All right, pay. ladies. If you need somebody <laughs> to get you some free food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but no, no, no. But then, be, no. But then, I was gonna get at this too, though. Before, but you before the, job, be, before no, but no. Here's the, you got a good job. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that shit. No, no it has everything to do with that. Has no, 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 no. If you were, no, if you were doesn't. broke, no, if you doesn't. were broke, you would not offer to pay everything. No, it's almost like a poker game. It's composure. It's almost you know I can even go I can even go in depth on this one too. Oh no! You oh, it's almost like a poker game. It's about composure. It's about yeah. Composure. It's a poker game, and it's you know what you can and, do. And the composure is your confidence. No, no, no. You know how you win by getting her to pay for your food. <laughs> no, that's how you win. No, 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 no. That that is a good thing, but yet again, I still have to say though, you're still playing the higher card. To to, and I'm not a big. So you poker like power. Person. You like power. Okay, you're a power. Uh, yeah. It's not even power though. Is it that, is no, po- no, 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 is, no, yeah. no, no. It's you're not holding power. the power of financial. No, 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 no. It's it's it's, it's still the old school. It's all. It's still the old school though. The old no, 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 school. no. That's what I'm saying. That's what old school is like. It is you know, having control of somebody with something. But it's different though, because <laughs> I've had girls. And women offer food, and they paid for food. But uh-huh. then again, it's like, like I didn't, like, like I still didn't see it coming. Now, if it happens, it happens. Let it happen. So, when it happens, how right. are you feeling? Uh, it happens. Cool. No, no, yeah. So it just happened. She paid for, for the food. What's going through your mind at that moment? Damn, she uh, paid for the food that I needed to pay for. And the reason I need to pay for it is because I believe I initiated the outing or I initiated. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's like sometimes they say whoever Initiates suggested it. the date Correct. pays for it. Correct. But, the, but, the, but that's, that's another thing. No, but yeah. that's what I was going to say. It, it becomes selective because before the fact, it becomes selective. Who, who, who are you asking? Who are you asking out? Are you asking everybody out? Because then, yeah, you're going to be fucking broke before you know it. Because you you know all these girls are going yeah they, who who does not want a fucking free meal? No, I'm trying to win at poker. But then to keep your composure and then play your best hand on the best one that you think you can play your hand at exactly. And then if you lose on that hand, you might lose it on the hand and fucking move on. It happens. It is what and it you, is. And you might and you might and and I feel losing on the hand could go one way or the other. Don't it could go get in the me friend wrong. zone. I, I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to save funds right now. But like I get it. Like if I had if I had more money, I would just offer to pay all the and not care. Like I, honestly, I would just be like, no, 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 just just take it. I don't care. Just you know. Yeah. Well, uh, you gotta be careful with that too, though. Yeah, with everybody. Like that's almost like 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 giving in. Like ah, oh, fuck it, I don't care. No, you still have to care about your money. You still have to care. The fact that it's your money. Once again, apathy is hitting me right now. <laughs> but that, I mean, but, but yet again, I, I still yeah. go back to this: to the fine line. It's, no, 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 no. Fine line with everything. Fine line with 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 that as well. Because I, I'm not saying uh, it's a it's a joke. Obviously, I'm not no, saying, I know, like, I, know, I, know I know, I know, I know, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, uh, I'll be happy to pay for whatever food. <laughs> Just give me a job first. Yeah. You know? Let me make some money. And then I'll do that. But right now, let's play some poker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but that's still what it's about, though. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. It's still about that. It's still about playing the poker game. Because I, they're it, full it, of shit just as much as we're full of, of this, shit. I feel like I don't play poker enough. But they're just as full of shit as much as we were full of shit. They're they're making well, they're making promises that more likely they can't deliver. 
they're making promises that they're not very sure of. They're just but they're here's just, the difference. Just, just, they like the moment. Here's the difference between me the and moment. them. I've made those promises more often. <laughs> but then be limited. Yeah. Just be monitor monitor yeah. it. Like throw a radar. I mean, it's just, it's not even that. I feel but no, like, it's still fun though. But that's what makes it I, fun though. No, 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 no. There's there's some toxicity there though. That's the that's the thing. I've, because that's what way, I was gonna bring up. But yeah, go ahead. The way I think of a relationship is just two people who love each other, know each other, who are willing to grow with each other. You know, to build a, a family or home and a certain thing. <laughs> I'm not dating these hoes. I am fucking these bitches, though. Uh, man. No, that, that sounds nice. That sounds really nice. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. That sounds like a movie. That sounds like a TV show. That's just like it is what it is. You know who you're talking to. No, 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 no. But, but you know but, who you are. You uh, are you trying to do that with everybody? <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying, based on what you're saying, I, I'm 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 glorifying the fact that because I I can say I can say the fact that man, it's difficult to find somebody that that you can trust. That's ba- the first the first thing is trust. Yeah, man. It's hard. That it shit is, hard. is fucking hard. It's also hard but for it, the end of, you. But, but it, goes, it goes on the other end where it can be fun. If you're in that place like you said, like you said earlier, like you're 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 in a place where you're able to So I was talking to a friend uh about this specifically and it's just like I told him I was just like, Yeah, I just I, I just been looking online, I've been reading about stuff all my life, I've been trying to like learn about things and he's even with when it comes to relationships and he was just like, Man, why are you trying to ruin the surprise? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like why are you gonna stop yourself from enjoying this thing that you've never seen or been introduced to or felt before? Yeah. Why are you trying to just stop that? Because you want to finish the rest of the story. Because you're too impatient to just live life and deal with what's in front of you. That's a very strong word right there. Seriously. That's true. Impatient. I, I am impatient. Like I said, ADHD. I go from one thing to another, one thing to another. Like I, It doesn't stop for me. But I'm beginning to realize how that negatively affects me yeah you know and trying to change those things this is hard it's, it's hella hard man but i feel if you're but but then but then that goes back to like if you're thinking that way then you're being proactive in a certain sense but then there's a, that other part of my life that uh like i said financials relationships but, but, this and all that it just doesn't but work I, out but i was joking earlier but i mean it's still at the same time if you're, if you're enabling yourself to promise things you can't deliver then obviously yeah you're gonna get in some situations yeah you're gonna get into some situations that you it's that one on in the middle i think No, so I guess you're. So I'm going all over the place, but I'm trying to. No, but the, you but know, I'm, but I'm in the true. fact like, that, like, like. Well, I'm sorry. It, it, you're right. Yeah, it, it's true. Like impatience is like the most important thing for. I feel like a lot of people. I, that's a lot of people's problems. Like they want everything now. Like I need it now. Fuck no. Fuck waiting. And they say like the the reward is usually sweeter when the longer you wait, right? Yeah. But I feel like all rewards are different. Oh, of course. And some rewards are good when it's immediate. You know, sometimes you you need but that's something. Still, but there's but but it and it does help. But I'm gonna go off even off the rails on this one. It's almost like I I even think it's a very sad thing. Like suicide is a very sick and sad thing but it's but it is a reward i get what you're saying now. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm saying like like, like the like, sweet release of death like when that when that actually happens those a lot of people they've done it look they've, 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 hey, done, they've done they've done the actual action of doing something that would possibly do that but i, I feel it's almost it takes a lot of strength well, to but, do that, because no, no, no. Think about no, it does. Oh, our, my, in our minds, 
the main thing we're trying to do is keep ourselves alive. No, true. That's what I'm saying. And we react. Our body reacts whenever it's hurt, whenever it, like something happens to it. Like there's a reaction to it. So obviously, when you are trying to do something to yourself, either with a or with something. Your body's still telling you, don't do this. Don't do this. You're trying to survive. You're trying to survive. So to fight that feeling, you would have to be feeling something very, you know, extraordinary at well, the time. But, but, uh, but, that, but, but based on piggybacking on what you're saying, it's, it's not going to be something that's, uh, like, sudden. It's something that's been growing and then you've been yeah, thinking. Yeah, building. Yeah, that, uh, and that, that's what I was going yeah, back to what Fighting we that saying. feeling again and it's just like, oh, no, now it's going to touch. Oh, okay. Right, and then that's by that time. Sometimes it's a little too late, and then yeah. you've already, you've already like you've consumed yourself has consumed themselves, yeah. and then you're in a place where there's no going back, and you've already okay. attempted it more more than once or twice. So that's I guess. Hey, remember everybody, sideways is for show, <laughs> long ways is for fun. <laughs> and it's very true. It's very true. I'm but, kidding, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but my point is that you have to realize these, these things, like, you know, how far are you going to go? You know, how far are, um, are you going to go out of your way to go for this woman? How far are you going to go? Well, that's, that's just... And then that, that, but that, that the person that you have to tell yourself, like, is this person genuine to me? Are we just friends? The pursuit of yeah. a woman changes with it's in, with individual. It changes with every different person, you know. Because like, <clears throat> I, I I feel like sometimes maybe you put the line on the on the table. So uh, I, I, I feel we're gonna hit three hours in oh, twenty minutes. Uh, I guess uh, I got some more time in me. <laughs> Fuck it, it's already here. <laughs> but I, I I feel like the more time we invest in somebody, it, it affects us, and we it sticks to us, you know. And when you go to the next relationship, some of that baggage comes with you. Oh yeah, and. I've I've heard it from oh, other friends. No, it's soul transfer. I, well, not even that, but like I've heard from other friends. Like when they see another woman, it's like, oh, okay, I don't want like her. Why? Because she does the same thing my last girl did. Yeah, or she looked like her. Or she looks like her. <laughs> or yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like it just it, she just reminds me of my ex. Yeah, then you that want whole something thing. different. But that's an automatic red flag. Why? Because you immediately feel that anger, sadness, whatever the fuck happened. And you're just like, no, I don't want that again. You know, fight or flight. That's that's you, you know, hopefully. Maybe you see, oh, she's just like, my ex, I got to go talk to her now. Yeah, <laughs> I hope right, you're not right. like that. Yeah. yeah. That, that's crazy. That's crazy right there. But, like, you understand why you don't want to see that same person for a while or however long, right? Yeah, you want something new. Yeah. And then you're trying to cleanse yourself and you're trying to test yourself. Try to do something different. But, it, but, it, but it, takes, it takes you to take that initiative to go that route, you know? And yeah, so I guess we went. On, I mean, I guess we went from talking about you coming back, oh my God. and then we talked about yeah, man. We have, we I think it's annoying. That. Yeah, we have to. End. I'm sorry. Uh, it's so weird how that started happening, like the very end. Is that your version of the light? No, that's your dad right now. It's your dad trying to stop this. <laughs> Nah. Mijo, Mijo. <laughs> Only I can do three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, no. I, I, he was actually list like maybe two feet over to the left of you, and then he was like going on and on and on. And I actually had to edit it. I had to edit that video because oh, really? he was, it was going longer? on. Oh, he was going on. I okay, mean, so for anybody he, he hearing, went to, he even went. I mean, I'm not even going to name. He went and talking about all uh, types of shit. Well, it was the truth. Like it was. For anybody hearing, yeah. this podcast was actually six hours. <laughs> it was just edited to whatever it is now. Hey, but it'd be badass to bring a Rike over here, though. That would be cool, yeah. And then I, I'll, I'll set up another one. I'll set up another one. How you could do that? Fuck yeah, I'll set up one right there. Dude, it'll be different when Enrique is here, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. It's going to be fun, yeah. 
No, yeah. no. Well, you you vouch for him, and that's cool. And I met him. He's yeah. He's great. Yeah. But no, I, I, this is what I want to provide. Like this is what I want to. Yeah, this is the whole the whole deal. The whole deal to do. Uh, this is a uh, this is a good time. I didn't expect to be talking for this long though. This is weird. Well, no, I'm just glad that you didn't have too much going on tonight. Yeah, we need to go ahead and this shit. Fuck it. All right. Well, all right, Joe. All right. Well, so I know we went all over the place, man. I know we kind of. That was fun. It was fun. I appreciate you coming through again. And then uh, this is the 18th episode, so hopefully, you know, we got some material out. I got some ideas for going back up. I plan on putting my name back in the secret group. And then I have your your uh, influence. You're a very good influence to me, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. No, man, but that, that's what I was saying. And I always, um, yeah, yeah, it was good running into you. And I made it a point to make it back to that Thursday, and then I was able to get on. Yeah. And, and, but, I mean, I still wanted to go back out and visit, and I still wanted to go to a brass tap. Brass tap, yeah, mm-hmm. to go over there. It's just this past Thursday, man. It's just work. It's been crazy. It's awesome. Whatever so, you can go out is when yeah, you can yeah. go out. Don't, but, don't ever tell me it's like, oh, yeah. Da, da, da. When you're there, everything's great. But, but when things, you're not, don't but, worry. But, 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 but just use me as an example. Things do get simplified. And, uh, they get, do get simplified. So Life happens. Yeah. And then, That's uh, the thing. And then, yeah. yeah and then, I do it because I get paid. If I yeah. wasn't getting paid... <laughs> That'd be a different story. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, I'm glad we had this episode 18 TST podcast. Thank you for coming through. Hanging out. I appreciate out. it. Thank and you. And then, yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely. Maybe we have that next episode, or maybe we we'll do another episode, and then Enrique will come through, and I'll have that shit set up so we can do all this here. Hopefully, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, you can throw that invite, and yeah, he's more than welcome. And then hopefully, hopefully, I want to have some more comics, and then. More comics, more just just whatever we can come out here and do and just present just to correlate with whatever's going on in the city. That sounds city good. City of Houston. Yeah. Yeah. And then rest in peace. Take off. Take off. Oh, Scotty Peterson as well. R.I.P. Oh, yeah. And Brian Hersey. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, that's another yeah. comedian, right? Comedian. Yeah, yeah, the the Houston yeah. scene that died. And he was a secret group. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, so every day is a blessing. End, yeah, I don't want to end off the podcast on a so, uh, you know. Nah, but I mean, at the same time, it's just, you know, it's, every day is a blessing. I, I would say that shit, you know. Every day is a blessing. Every yes. day, wake up, we chill. Hey, man, we're able to do this. Yeah. I, I was, like I said, when I saw you, I was like, oh, shit. Fucking Joe. I was like, glad to see you, man. So it was all good. Yeah, it's always good to see you, man. Yeah, man. And I appreciate it. But, yeah, yeah, thank, thank you for you having sometime. me on. Oh, fuck yeah, man. But like I said, I still got to edit this shit. So you gotta do all these other Once things. Again, six hours, guys. <laughs> so six hours of recording. Oh, yeah, 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 and it's edited. It's gonna be edited. Oh yeah. 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 But all right. But cool. Hey, thank you for editing out that word I said. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, we'll edit that you know out. which word? Yeah, I think huh. I think I do. Yeah, marriage. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, I guess this is gonna be it. Yeah. Right. Cool. All right. All right, Joe. Later, bro.